Help keep the family car in the family with Valvoline's Max Life. Max Life, the first motor oil specially formulated to recondition used seals to help prevent leaks, helping your higher mileage engine run for a long, long time. After our naps, we'll flush the radiator. Now there's an entire line of Max Life products that'll help keep your higher mileage car around for a long time. The first major advance for the fastest treatment of athlete's foot was Lamisil AT. Lamisil AT was the first non-prescription medicine proven to kill the fungus with just one week's use. Not even a prescription can beat that. Lotrim and AF and Tanakin still expect you to treat for four weeks. Who's gonna do that? When your feet itch and burn, using Lamisil AT one week keeps you athlete's foot free three months. Lamisil AT, there's no better way to cure athlete's foot. Wednesday, George's son is caught peeping on his sister's friends. Come on, relax. You probably can't even see anything through it. Oh, hey, Olivia. An all-new George Lopez. Then, six girls fight for Andrew's heart, and things get vicious. I need to be away from her. She's irritating me. The Bachelor. Then, we'll take two ordinary women and transform them into extraordinary beauties. I'm about to see my bride, minus 10 years. Extreme Makeover. All-new, right after my wife and kids. ABC Wednesday. Welcome back to Philadelphia, everybody. For Mark Recchi, it has been a very busy week, both on and off the ice. Chris Simpson. Thanks, Gary. Well, I'm here with someone who's had a pretty big week this week, Mark Recchi. Mark, first of all, how is the newest addition to the Recchi family? Uh, they're doing great. Uh, I was there last night, and uh, everybody's doing well, and hopefully they'll be home tomorrow. So. Now, you told me that your wife actually was so under the pressure of watching the last game. She actually had to turn off the TV after the first overtime. It's safe to say she'll be watching you today. Yeah, she'll be watching today. Yeah, her mother uh, is going down there, and they're going to watch it this afternoon. So uh, it'll be great. So hopefully have a big one for them. Excitement of all of that, but I got to think, too, it's probably not too difficult to focus on the task at hand today. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we know what we have to do, and this is a big, this is a big uh, game for us. We have to go, you know, uh, take advantage of home ice and uh, go up to Toronto and hopefully do some damage here. So. Well, Mark, congratulations and thanks. Thank you. Mark Recchi and the Flyers ready to take on the Toronto Maple Leafs puck drop after these messages. For over 60 years, Owens Corning has been advancing the science of insulation, roofing, siding, sound control, and more. And everything we've learned, we've put into one very special place, your home. Owens Corning, innovations for living. Michelin designed the cross-terrain SUV tires specifically for SUVs to help provide responsive handling and a smooth ride. You'd be surprised just how smooth. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Why is everyone talking about KFC boneless wings? I've never tasted anything like them. I love these things. They're like totally sweet and tiny. It's the best of both worlds. One bite and you're hooked. Yeah, no, give me some more. So much flavor. It seems KFC boneless honey barbecue wings are all the rage. Premium white breast meat with all the fun and flavor of wings. Hurry in and get seven pieces for $2.99 or 20 pieces for $7.99. How do you feel about KFC boneless wings? I'm sorry, one more time. I, I, didn't, I didn't quite hear you. <laughs> What do you care? You've got the goodness of Reese's peanut butter and milk chocolate. Get lost in a Reese's. Somewhere between Wyoming and Nebraska, there was nothing. Somewhere between 65 and 70, a law was broken. Somewhere between stop it and you're grounded, a mom pulled over. And somewhere between where you are and where you're going, there's a Super 8. See you along the way. This is out of control. How am I supposed to manage all of this? No, that's not what I mean. Look, I just want this to work with that. That's not a solution. What am I paying you for? 
versus Niagara Falls. Let's see who attracts more attention. Here it is. That's right, you're not seeing these, folks. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? This is your wedding present. Oh, so you can just take that. Is it pretty? Want to get your name on there? A real cop? Yeah, check that. Are we ever lucky? Is this like the eighth wonder of the world? Stanley Cup Playoffs on ABC, presented by Nextel. Brought to you by Nextel. Life's better when your cell phone has a walkie-talkie. Bud Light, the proud sponsor of the NHL. Jaguar Cars, Jaguar, born to perform. And Southwest Airlines, more than 2,700 nonstop daily flights to 59 destinations all across the country. John Saunders, Barry Melrose in the studio. I think we both agree that this series between Toronto and Philadelphia has been the best yeah. play of hockey we've seen in a while. Most intense, most physical. Two teams that are really going at each other's tooth and nail. And I really think if this series is going to go any longer than six games, Eddie Belfort has to steal this game. His team is beat up a little bit right now. Mogilny's not 100%. They're coming off that overtime loss, which is very, very tough mentally to come back from. But the Toronto Maple Leafs must protect Belfort more. He's being run into too much, too much traffic in front of him. Keep the shooters to the outside more. Winner of the East still come out of this one? I think Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the best team in the East right now. Not Toronto anymore, Philadelphia. Well, we'll find out. The winner of Game 5 is going to have a big upper leg. Right now, let's join Gary, Bill, and J.D. Gentlemen, thanks very much, and welcome to Philadelphia. Wild House here. They've got the Thunder Sticks on hand to add to the raucous as if the series needed more. It does not. Each team has won a game on the other's home ice. The overtimes have piled up, including a triple overtime the last time around. There are those thunder sticks. A lot of Toronto fans are here. And Eddie Belfour coming off a magnificent game he lost. Three times in this series, the Flyers have been given a penalty for getting too close to Eddie Belfour. And you just heard Barry Melrose mention that they would like to get into his kitchen a little bit. Well, without Eddie Belfour, this series could possibly be over right now. Roman Chekmanek has gotten such good protection. All, all I think he needs to do is stop the stoppable shots for the Flyers to be successful. Matt Sundin against Jeremy Roenick. ABC News will keep us updated. Any breaking stories from the war with Iraq, we will have them for you. A pivotal game in a series tied at 2-2. The dump in and immediate offside. Pat Quinn gets a little help with his Toronto Maple Leafs with McGillney back. Uh, he, he sure does, obviously. Big game players for Toronto are Matt Sundin and Alexander McGillney, and Pat Quinn has them together. That is why Ken Hitchcock for the Flyers is going to try and load up against him. Sammy Kapanen is playing the left side with Jeremy Roenick today. He's a better defensive player than Simon Gagne, and Kapanen will go head-to-head -head with McGillney. And Gary Roberts is going to join Sundin and McGillney on this line to make it an even stronger force and a little more physical. There's McGillney. Roberts out there with him. Drop to Sundin. Sundin will dump that one in. First goals in this playoff year have mattered in most series, and this one doesn't tell you very much. Not much tells you anything in this series, including the fact the Flyers have severely outshot Toronto 181 to 111. It's just been who hangs with them longest. Cleared into the zone. Icing call coming up here on the touch. Bill, you mentioned that Kapanen may go head to head, and it looks like he will against Mogilny. Kapanen, when he played for the Hurricanes last season in the Stanley Cup playoffs, he played 23 playoff games, only had one goal. But he is smart, as you say, defensively, and Mogilny's the guy that can hurt you for the Leafs. He doesn't need many scoring chances to score. From the point, that one got deflected before it got into Eddie Balfour. Reichelson had the opportunity. Third back on the near side. Each team has changed it up. Rocket Reichel tried to run it in, and it both checked away. Primo will bring it out. Primo on a big line gets dumped uh, at center ice. He got hit by it. A uh, big check by Brian McKay. Rolled back through center. This has been a physical series. They've, each team's had a couple of days off. So even though they played a triple overtime game last time out, they come in more rested than would be normally true if they had only had the one day rest. Oh, and the extra day is, is huge for the guys that were really licking their wounds after game four. And there were lots of those. In fact, there weren't many who weren't licking their wounds. Dimitri Escavich got it to center. John LeClaire had bounced away. McGillney leads this team with five goals, six assists for Toronto. Philadelphia led by Reckie's four goals and six points. That one uh, got chipped behind the net. Chuck Monica did not get to it. 
Pretty good hitting early on, but under control. There are bodies flying everywhere. Both of these teams and their management want the rest to let them play early. Neither team wants a special team matchup early in the series. So as far as Pat Quinn and Ken Hitchcock are concerned right now, this is the way they want to start each game. John Koharski, Stephen Wacom are the referees in this game. LeClaire trying to feather that one in. Couldn't get it through. That was Eric Weinrich, a defenseman cutting up. Big time push taking Yerke Lume down was John LeClaire. LeClaire just shoved him out of the way. LeClaire can play big. He's something Toronto has to handle in front of that net. LeClaire gets to the front of the net. He and Lume are still fighting. There they are. LeClaire wrote him off on the deflection in on Belfort. Big time shift for John LeClaire. Loose in the corner. Ty Domi was out there. Three on two opportunity up ice. Green dumps it back into the middle. Still three on two. Bang! He's a defenseman who jumped into the play at the end of a long shift. This is the first shot on goal for either team. And Berg jumped into the play. Watch the battle. But here's oh, the deal. Man. The Flyers had three guys down low, and it cost them. That's exactly right. Ken Hitchcock said yesterday, Toronto's best scoring chances are after we turn the puck over or after we have a scoring chance. They were caught deep, three on two the other way because of Berg getting into the play. And at the end of a shift where they were pressured and good defensively, Berg scores the goal. It's a great shot. Roman Cechmonic was way out cutting down the angle, but he started to lean. Ike Berg gets his first ever playoff goal. He scored only four regular season goals. And the Toronto Maple Leafs take the early 1-0 lead in the game. Cleared back out. Big hit on top. Fitzgerald on the far side. Set in, and there's there's going to be a penalty pretty soon. Cavalier on the far side. There's hitting going on away from the play as well as on the puck. As nobody's missing the opportunity to land a little body. Chase down, far side loose. Marty Murray came over to get it, could not. Set up in front, bouncing puck. Thought LaPointe was trying to get into the middle. LaPointe set up in front of the net. Brashear drops it off to D joining the play. Belfour will glove it. The goal at 2.34. Aki Berg got it. Green picking up one of the assists on it. And Darcy Tucker the other. Isn't that interesting? Ken Hitchcock said, you know, Toronto's best scoring chances in this series have been after we've been deep in their zone. Either the goalie makes a save or a turnover, or we miss the net. The Leafs come back the other way and score on the odd man rush. And that's exactly what happened. What, what really has been uh, something unpredictable in this series is the Flyers have found their offense. That was a concern. They have not been able to contain Toronto with their top-ranked defense. Jeremy Roenick, 48% on the wins, won that one, but... The attempted dump in gets cleared out the center. Desjardins came back to get it. McGillney is right back out there. Chipped in Kavanaugh and fire side. Tony Amati shuts her down. Looking into the middle shot. Desjardins save made by Belfour. Again a defenseman joining the flow. That is cleared out by Roberts. Trying to get it ahead to Sundin. It'll be cleared in by McGillney. Chegmatic behind the net. Dropped it off. That obviously quiets the house here in Philadelphia for the moment. At the point, McCabe a chance. Rebound, Sundin. Sundin chipped it in behind and it came right out. And it's covered up by Roman Chegmani. Alexander McGillney back in the lineup for Toronto. He missed game four because of what happened in game three. A collision at the blue line between McGillney and Jeremy Roenick. And Roenick's stick came up hard right under the chin. Boom! Of McGillney. He had concussion like symptoms. And you could have guessed that the way he wobbled off the ice. Oh, he said he was fuzzy. And he wasn't feeling well, and he just had a shift where he took a run at Terrian, so he looks to be healthy. Here's Lume at the point. Toronto sending it around behind the net. Couldn't be reached by Alan Nolan. Nolan has uh, picked up no goals so far in this series. The Toronto newspapers and press have been on him in the past two days. The headline story saying, where is Olin? Well, Alan Nolan's out there, but he's not gotten the goals, and that's why he was traded for late. Weinrich, that one just trickled in. Came right back to him. Weinrich again wide of the net. He was trying to set it up near side to LaPointe, who was standing there. Back up again, Weinrich, and a whistle that came outside the line. Offside. You know, I was thinking about the goal scored by Berg. His defense partner, uh, Lume, did all the work. Remember the battle he had with LeClaire? They worked, 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 and all of a sudden Berg, who didn't get work on the shift, was able to jump into the play. And the Leafs have that one nothing lead. I'll be out here in front, Yerke, as soon as you're ready to get it to yeah. me. Right? Keep working, big boy. Yeah, you're I'll doing, be open. You're doing great in there. <laughs> they are doing that. Face off. Uh, going to be done again. That on the draw is Travis Green back from a rib injury his second game. The guys were seeing matchups. Four lines for both teams. And it looks like the same centerman against the same centerman. 
That one goes behind the net. It'll be played by Mike Recky. Recky trying to go back to the point. A double team got hit by Green. Still loose behind the net. And I mean there are bodies down on the ice. This starts out the same way the previous four games have gone. Extremely physical. This is the line that hurt Toronto in game four. Mark Recky with a couple of tallies. Michael Hanzus had his best game of the playoffs. That's Hanzus who knocked it down. He got it away to Recky. He's wide open. Mark Recky shot. Belfour makes the save. Rebound to Skavich. That shot blocked to the corner. Putting the body down was Tom Fitzgerald. It'll be an icing call when touched up at the other end. Other action going on today. John and Barry. With the Bud Light updates, the Minnesota Wild just trying to stay alive, and Willie Mitchell gets the first goal of the game. Willie Mitchell's been a great find for this team. He's played solid all year long. Not an offensive player. That's his first playoff goal. And Patrick Waugh would like to have that one back. Went right through him under his arm. one nothing. Colorado leading that series three games to one as put away time is here in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs for a number of teams. Off the face off to the left side of Belfour one back to the point little pick set Belfour save made he had Donald Brashier cutting through the middle on Janssen's shot. Good play by Belfour on the focus held in near side boards Marty Murray won the draw gets it back into the corner Murray gets a little help from Brashier into the middle turnaround shot deflected in front still sitting there ran into the middle by Brashier while he was on his knees and uh, cleared out. Boy, I'll tell you what, Donald Brashier has got the phaser on something more than stun. He's taken no prisoners in this one. Good play by McCabe to knock it away. Cutting into the middle of the point, never came up with a puck. You gotta love the discipline, guys. Th these two teams are hammering each other. Sticks are down, elbows are down. I'm sure something was said before the game. There's always a meeting with league officials regarding anything of interest uh, that the league wants the teams to know about. And the way this game has gone and the verbiage that has been part of it, I'm sure there was something said about keep it clean. Everything's on the line, too. Yeah. Everything's on the line. Toronto playing much smarter than what they did during the regular season when they led everybody with the amount of times they were shorthanded. And that's the number one thing Pat Quinn said yesterday his team had to do in this game. We've got to play smarter. Knocked away by Terry and McGill. He had it, couldn't run it into the zone. Sundin up, just blocked it with his skate. It's onside, two on one. Sundin left it, Roberts missed. Gary Roberts was wide open on the far side. Another odd man down low. It goes up and over the glass. The Leafs, one nothing over the Flyers. Voice message, press one or wait for the tone. You think I need my car back? I have to go to a meeting. Okay, Daddy, I'll be home in 10 minutes. Okay. Life's good when you're George Lopez. But life's better when you're George Lopez and you have the cell phone with the walkie talkie. Get right through. Next tell. William Lyons, founder of Jaguar, once said, the car is the closest thing we will ever create to something that is alive. What's wrong? I don't know, it's just a little weird with them here. They're just here because it's hockey night. They don't care about us. Guys. Uh, yeah, go ahead, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, fine, buddy. <sighs> Guys. I need this. Come on, Schmuckums. testing you look at symptoms but it really is a decision made by a committee of coaches doctors and players that is of course unless you're Jeremy Roenick and you just tell the doctors you're playing guys Jeremy Roenick refused to be seen by doctors at least that's what he's saying publicly about the fact he might have had a concussion centered shot but just deflected wide 
Jonas Hoagland was all alone in front. Did Czech kind of get a piece of that because Hoagland was point blank? Wow, he added on. That's a couple of odd man situations and on the rush, and then a guy all alone in front of the net here in the first seven minutes of this first period. Morano trying to hold it in. Fireside did. Owen Nolan got it there. Finally cleared back out of the zone. Ragnarsson. Here's an odd man three on two the other way. Little Rome Gagne takes it. That one deflected high. That was a three on two opportunity. Simon Gagne was open. After the blue line. Flyers trying to hold it in. Yuskevich stepped up, couldn't get it. Oh, no, no, it may not have scored yet, but he's the one that set up Hoagland for that good chance, and then he was back covering up for the defenseman. Intercepted. Tucker broke his stick. A break for Philadelphia. Broken stick on an errant pass out of the zone. Leclerc to Recky. Recky dumps it around the far side. Desjardins had joined the play because Tucker had gone to get a stick. But that's Tucker who ends up clearing it out. Chris Terrian comes back in his own end. Terrian who's played a plus two in the four games. Strong defensive for Philadelphia. At the Philadelphia blue line, the puck sits. They'll have to take it back. He cleared it wide side. Recky's line out there. Recky with Leclerc and Hansus for Philadelphia. Hansus trying to center. Recky. Recky takes the shot from behind. And Glenn Wesley get in on him. Suddenly Toronto's getting some of their people back. Obviously Doug Gilmore and drop off are both out of there with injuries. But they uh, do get Wesley back and that matters. Oh, that means a lot because he pairs up with McCabe. They both play well. John Leclerc just finished a shift where he got hammered twice by McCabe once and by Tucker once. Rice here looking into the middle, centering pass block. He had Claude LaPoy cutting. That ends up going into the net. one nothing leaves. Don't forget, next Saturday, conference semifinal action. Stanley Cup playoffs, ABC, presented by Nextel. Next Saturday, live at 3 Eastern on ABC Sports Championship TV. Gary mentioned that Pat Quinn, the head coach of the Leafs, wants his guys to play smarter. Eddie Belfort has played really smart in this game so far. Flyers have their skates almost in the paint looking for rebounds. At least three times by my count, he has actually rebounded pucks past the guys that are right close to him to a layer of players who are wearing blue past the Flyers guys. Boy, what a night he had the other night. Now, he had, gave up three goals with Philadelphia winning triple overtime. He made 72 saves. McGillney saved Jack Monick on a tough shot. Flyers will move it back out. Both teams trying to run it up end to end. Kapanen had it, lost it. Here's another two on one. McGillney's on the left side. Robert Sundin in the middle. Three on two. Robert's pass broken up. Terry and got back. That is the third odd man rush the Flyers have given up. And we haven't played 10 minutes of the first period. And you know something, guys? Remember earlier in the period, Gary Roberts couldn't hit the net when he had the scoring chance? And on this play, he had trouble giving the puck behind him oh. to Sundin. Oh, I want to give Chris Terrian credit for breaking up this play, but Gary Roberts made oh, it yeah. easy for him. Roberts was in a shooting position if there ever was one. Right between the hash marks, just oh, yeah. about. Or give it to Matt Sundin, who's right there, too, who had the, the gun loaded to shoot it. Gary looks like he's sore, and he's had a good series. But this Toronto team is playing fairly smart in their zone and they are countering like crazy well, the, guys but well, the Flyers aren't playing smart they're getting caught and it, it, look at that three to nothing in the odd man rushes and that's usually because somebody has made a low percentage play and his backfired. Simon Gagne came into the zone with it gets tied up one nothing leads the Leafs out shooting the Flyers 4-3 here in the first period that is Owen Nolan Nolan he'll dump it in on the same side check came back to get it in with a 206 goals against the 90 percentage save so far in this series. Belfour, a 243 and a 928 save percentage. That gets blocked and ends up going into the screen. So we're seeing matchups here. Every single time Sundin's been on the ice, he's playing against Ronick. Whenever Reichel's been on the ice, he just was, he's playing against Primo. Whenever Green's on the ice, he's playing against Hanzus. And in the fourth lines, Fitzgerald and Lapointe are seeing each other. So the coaches, I think because of the long game, game four, happy with four lines. But Ken Hitchcock doesn't look happy with his team's play so far. I think he's driving the matchups because he's the yeah. home coach. But the, the thing that he's not happy with is the mistakes. The Flyers may learn the hard way that it's possible to lose a game in the first period, but you very seldom can win one. Just away by Hansus. Reiki coming over to get it. Wesley had a piece. Leclerc trying to move it out. Fine play. Glenn Wesley reaching in with a long stick. Then held it long enough to dump it into the zone. Wesley had the broken foot getting back into the action quicker than thought here in this playoff series. He is now playing in his third game of the five that have been played. That one bounced up against the glass will be held there and they get the whistle for a face off. A leaf lead, one nothing. You're watching the National Hockey League ABC Sports Championship TV. Sir William Irons, founder of Jaguar, once said, 
the car is the closest thing we will ever create to something that is alive. Halibut with polenta cake sounds good. Oh, but polenta sometimes makes me break out. Mm, I will get oh, a vegan club sandwich. Mm, vegans are like so in. Is the salmon East Coast or West Coast? That'll just do a number on me. I can come back later. Crab cakes. Oh, I had crab cakes. <clears throat> last Sir? Tuesday. Porterhouse, medium, rare, slaw, cob, ranch, blue, fries, baked, toppings, all of them. Oh, here's something coconut dipped shrimp saute with pilaf. I like pilaf. Some people don't realize how many non-stop flights Southwest offers, so we created this simple color-coded map to help. Baltimore to L.A. is red. Phoenix to Raleigh-Durham, blue. Chicago to Seattle, yellow. L.A. to Austin, canary yellow. Orlando to Albuquerque, teal. Las Vegas to Houston, aquamarine. Buffalo to Phoenix, beige umber. San Jose to Baltimore, pistachio. Oakland to Chicago, sea green. Albany to Orlando, puce. Tampa to St. Louis, pinkish. New Orleans to San Diego, kinda green. You are now free to move about the country. Well, this bench looks like an over-anxious bunch of guys. I mean, the Flyers are trying to get this thing done early, and they've allowed Toronto to end up with three odd-man rushes, and this is the best defensive team in the NHL. Do you know, do you know the Flyers have scored the first goal of the game? The last three games, Toronto has it here. But their turnovers just inside the Toronto blue line have hurt them a lot. Off the draw at center, push deeper into the Toronto end. ABC News keeping us updated. Any breaking stories on the war with the rack, and we'll have it for you. At center, hands is dropped it ahead. Here's John LeClaire. LeClaire, one goal, one assist so far, and he fell for. Stays down to get it. LeClaire moves in as close as he can get to have a chat with Eddie Belfour. And uh, behind the play, whistles blown. We're going to get penalties, or at least one. went over to Mark Recky to say something to him because they thought Recky could have avoided Eddie Belfour altogether. And when Domi showed up, Mark Recky gave him a straight right to the chin and has picked up a rushing penalty here. Ouch. You know, if there's one thing officials don't like, it's scrums. And there's the shot. <laughs> Time's reaction. He can't he, believe that. <laughs> you know, in a hot but it worked. He went, he went there for that specific yeah. purpose. And Mark Recky took the bait. Toronto 3 for 15 on the power play in the series. Here's the power play first of the game at 9.30 to go here in the period. Brecky out of there at 10.25 on the roughing call. And a one nothing lead fly for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Flyers, though, with the puck short-handed. Here's Jeremy Ronick sent it into the middle. Robert Sundin's on the left. McGillney, Robert Sundin stay together. McGillney moves it in. Got it to Robert's off-shooting wing, though. He'll go back on top. Caberlet, Spela working the point. Spela, Philadelphia coming out after the puck. Amati was not going to give Spela any room. Spela has it near side. Back into the middle. Caberlet has got a good shot. Caberlet, not a lot of room. Box pretty tight. They move all the way to the blue line with it. McGillney down low. Nobody in front of the net here. It's a spread out power play. They try and find an alley, and there wasn't any. What a job by those penalty killers. The forwards are really up high on the two defensemen. But the reason they can do that is that the Toronto point men were so close together. The penalty killer, you don't fear the point men when they're right next to one another. Good play by Kapanen up there on the forecheck, forcing that play back. Renberg had to come get it. Both teams change up on their specialty units. 53 left on the Toronto advantage. Sundin in. Save made. Rebound Sundin. Knocked it behind the net. Sundin goes up the half wall. Couldn't connect on it. Held in at the point. Not twice. McCabe had it the first time. Big save. The other end. Check Monik got an opportunity. Sundin waltz through the middle. That one's going to be intercepted. Fans want to call on a trip. Won't get it. Played back by McCabe. 28 seconds left to go on this power play. Power play regular season was ranked 11th in the league for Toronto. Michael looking into the middle, gunning through nobody that time. Held in fire side, McCabe at the point. McCabe leaves it down low. Renberg got on the power play. They try and get a little muscle in the middle now. Centering pass, shot deflected wide. Yuskevich cutting in was all alone. As he came in from the point, shot into the middle, and that's going to be deflected back to McCabe. McCabe trying to gain a little ground, couldn't get around Claude LaPointe. Sent back to the point, McCabe, that one missed. Didn't get it on net. Oh, and Nolan, Nolan looking into the middle. Instead, it comes to the point, McCabe. McCabe, wide side, just on the iceberg. McCabe, Brister, wide again, he missed the net. Penalty is over, they do not get a goal, but 
they sure made it interesting. One shot on the power play and a lot of rips that missed. Held in though by Renberg. Renberg heading to the front. Owen Nolan had it blocked by Recky. Renberg got it back. Renberg center. That gets pushed to the near side boards. Back to the point. Aki Berg has got the Toronto goal in front. That shot deflected. Philly needs a clear. They need to. They need to get their feet moving. More than anything, Toronto's starting to skate better and better and better, and the Flyers are slowing down. The feet follow the head. I don't think the Flyers are in this game mentally in the sense that they, I think they came in way too wound up. A penalty coming, and it's going to be on Toronto. Delayed call. It may be for closing the hand on the puck and throwing it out of the zone. Delayed call. Extra skater out there for Philadelphia with 6.27 to go in the period. Weinrich got it into the middle. It'll be flipped in. That's the whistle. Power play Flyers. A reminder, tomorrow, Shaq, Kobe, and the Lakers begin their quest for a fourth straight championship. They take on Kevin Garnett and the Timberwolves. It'll be Game 1 Western Conference Playoff Series tomorrow live at 3 o'clock Eastern here on ABC. Well, Darcy Tucker usually picks up penalties for roughing. Mind you, he's been a disciplined guy in this series. Only had one minor before this one. This one, J.D., as you pointed out, was for closing his hand on the puck. You see the hit by Kapanen. The puck did go by him, but now he's down. He finds the puck, picks it up, throws it. Backhand motion. The Flyers' power play has struggled. Two for 21, but they need one now. One nothing lead for Toronto. Shot Johnson. Save made. Bill Ford just got it. As it headed behind the net. Svela turned it around, but not out. Najardin and Johnson working the points of the power play. In front. Block to the circle. Cleared up and up. It's amazing how teams use skill players to kill penalties. You look at McGillney and Sundin, they just went off. They can score shorthanded goals. They're mobile, they're smart. Eric Weinrich has a power play goal. John LeClaire has a power play goal in this series for Philadelphia. Kapanen out on the power play to Tony Amani now. Amani moves up with Desjardins. Now heads to the front of the net. Cleared off the near side. There's Amati, goes to the half wall. Johnson gets back to his point position. Kim Johnson, the wrister. Scores! Can't stop, but you can't see. And the Flyers worked on their power play yesterday. And part of the message was this. Don't try to score from the point we're shooting wide most of the time. Just get it to the front. That's exactly what Kim Johnson did. Eddie Belfort didn't look like he saw it. Jeremy Roenick might have deflected it. But clearly, yeah. the screen and a little wrist shot, simple is sometimes better. Yeah, Kappen and Ann Ron Ann Roenick were in front. It went through the legs of Jeremy Roenick, who had released from behind the net. Kim Johnson, the former Ranger, just took the wrist shot, put it on goal, and no way Belfort saw that shot. A power play goal. Ties this game at one apiece. Janssen who had 10 goals during the regular season. Five of those were power play goals for Philadelphia. That was the third wrist shot the Flyers attempted from the point on the power play. Not one slapper, and that's the way to go. And that one worked. Here's McCabe, so a 1-1 game. Toronto will ship that one into the corner. Chase down. Murray came back. That one got blocked. Weinrich tipped it away. Hansus clears it out of the zone. Going to have to be played. Cave coming back to get it. 4.53 left to go here in period number one. Series tied at 2-2 in this game five in Philly, and that is offside. Well, the Flyers had only been two for 21 on their power play. The hard work yesterday paid off. Scrambling defensively, the Flyers on this goal have been able to tie it. Now the toughest leg of the strongman competition, Norm, the Bud Light Industrial Fridge Pole. Jim, that's 1,000 pounds of pure hernia that they'll try to drag across. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Norm, but it looks like a fan from the stands has stolen the Bud Light. Oh, a huge hit from out of nowhere. And this guy's got the foot speed to take this thing all the way. Oh, man. Come in, bro. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Okay, who's the hero? Make it a Bud Light. Custom crepe for Stanley Cup, $2,700. 30 pairs of white gloves, size large, $360. Silver polish, $9. Spending every waking moment with hockey's holy grail, priceless. There are some things money can't buy, 
For everything else, there's MasterCard, official card of the NHL and lifelong fan of Phil Pritchard, keeper of Lord Stanley's Cup. Sir William Lyons, founder of Jaguar, once said, the car is the closest thing we will ever create to something that is alive. Johnson has been credited with a goal, but there's the man who's probably going to get it ultimately, Sammy Kapanen. We had the advantage of checking a couple of replays during our break, and it sure looked like Sammy Kapanen deflected it down between Jeremy Roenick's legs. And Roenick was on for the power play goal. For the first time, we're seeing Primo go head-to-head -head with Sundin in this first period. Here's Sundin centering for Roberts, who got a step with Desjardins. McGillney, Primo takes it away. Sundin intercepts, shot, save off the blocker, and that was not expected. Comes back to match Sundin. Sundin, the leader of this Toronto team. Loose in behind the net. Primo back. Roberts on it. Got it away to Justin Williams. Williams moves it out of there. Justin Williams looking for his first goal here, playing in the fourth of five games. Gagne shot. Belfour there. In behind the net. Fine play as it's held up. Justin Williams trying to force the play. McGillney into the middle. Pass intercepted. They're on side. Eddie Belfour the save on Simon Gagne. Errors there by Toronto. Coming up, our intermission report. John and Barry will be along. We'll get caught up on the Wild and the Avalanche. They're playing today, and Recky's big day was it ever. All on our intermission report. It looks to me as if the Flyers have stabilized after burning off a lot of the adrenaline that got him into trouble early in this period. Mark Recky has been the most dangerous flyer in this series. If you go by goals, Alexander McGillney for Toronto. Well, they rested him down the stretch. He was overused the regular season because of Philadelphia injuries, and they rested him down the stretch, and Recky has repaid them. Jeremy Roenick had that shot coming off the draw. Roenick got it back, sends it in on Pelfour. Had trouble covering, but long enough to hang on. Boy, Eddie Belfour came down with the, the blocker and just let up on Tony Amati before he got a penalty. Former teammates with the Blackhawks, yeah. Amati and Belfour. I remember when Amati was drafted by the Rangers, I asked Scotty Bowman, what kind of player is Amati? He says, he reminds me of Yvonne Cornwallier. He plays the off wing, he can skate, and he cuts to the net. Sure enough, he's had a pretty good career. Dumped into the corner compared to Yvonne Cornwallier. He's had a hell of a yeah. career, actually. Some folks aren't quite sure he was a flying player. Read by Yuskevich. He knew that his coverage had forgotten about him, and he slipped into a hole right in the slot. And what a pass to get him! But Toronto now committing the turnovers, and Yuskevich was able to step right in as soon as Ronick picked up the turnover. Watch this feed. A beautiful pass. Jeremy Ronick made it happen though behind the net. Traffic in front of Belfour again. Did that hit somebody in front? That might have even deflected. Well, I know that Ronick is the one to knock the, pat, the puck down from behind the net and set it up. Nice play. Now a 2 to 1 lead for the Flyers. We've had two completely different games played here in the first period. The first 10 minutes, it was Toronto controlling and Philadelphia making the errors. Here in the last nine minutes, it's been exactly the opposite. Brashier sends it in. Eddie Belfour has got to hang on, and the Flyers putting the heat on. I guess it makes you think about Toronto missing all those chances in the first half of the period, only getting the one goal. Well, a, a Flyer supporter would tell you that Roman Cechmonic might have had yeah. something to do with that. He oh, made yeah. some pretty good saves. Certainly but, did. But if the Leafs could have gotten a second one, they did not. Great forecheck by the Flyers, and Yuskevich was wheeling. You know what? His guy, Hoagland, that should have been on him, went over to the boards waiting for a hard rim to break out, and that is why Yuskevich is wide open. There's J.R. who gets the assist on Yuskevich's first goal of the series. Tony Amati picked up an assist as well. Amati right now has two assists on the board on the two goals. 14-30 and 16-25, the time of the goals. They've not changed that first one yet, but probably during the intermission when they go through the video, it will be Sammy Cabot and he'll be credited with it. Right now, yonson has got it. Taken back by Tarion. Tarion dumps it fire side. This has been a series. 300 minutes worth where these teams have not been separated by more than one goal. 
in front. Belfour gets back. What a save. Rookie, another save. What a play by Eddie Belfour, who got caught out of the net. Desjardins waits and sends it back for Recky. Recky looking in front, trying to get it to LeClaire. LeClaire, is he doing battle? Two flyers on him. Weinrich's shot goes wide. That bounced into the middle. A break right there for Toronto. Tucker moves it in. Tucker looking. Shot. Hit the post! Hit the post on the far side. He had his arm up celebrating. No light, no call. For Sundin, intercepted Hanzus. Hanzus to the red and up. Ken Hitchcock has changed his deep pairing. That time it was Desjardins out there with Weinrich. Before that it was Terrian out there with Janssen. It's Fela trying to move it out of the zone. He didn't get it there. Good work near side by Simon Gagne to hold it in. Belfort again went back to play it. Got crunched a little bit and turned to the ref. Remember, we, call. remember we said the Flyers weren't skating? The power play goal got them skating. 2-1 lead. Philadelphia in this series is tied at 2-2. Caberlet coming back to get it. Caberle trying to center. Gagne again was on him. Great play. Gagne. Williams leaves it at a point. Iskavich has got a goal. Going for another. That deflected in front. Belfour had a lot of traffic in front of him that time. And Philadelphia is getting that done here in the first period. McGillney knocked it away to center. Even on that shot. Iskavich took something off it. The Flyers are being smart on their sharp angle shots where they've gotten themselves into hot water early in the series by shooting wide. They're just trying to get the shot on net. Both teams changing it up. Tucker on the far side. Yuskevich gloved it ahead. Played uh, again. Uh, Hoagland, rather. Hoagland sends it into the zone. Under a minute left to go here in the first period. Only a couple of penalties. Each team has had a power play opportunity. And Philadelphia took advantage of theirs, scoring the power play goal. Owen Nolan with it. Nolan drops it back to McCabe. Now Toronto running around a little bit as the Flyers have him guessing. Jack Monick dished off far side. Yuskevich takes the hit. Came back to the point. Tony Amati looking. Went wide side. 34 seconds left in the period. Ronick brought it in. Nice little drop pass. Kapanen feathered it to the corner. There it will be picked up by McCabe. McCabe reversing direction. Off the near side. Reichel out the center. Still got time. That'll be sent in by Healy. Check put on far side. Renberg still moved in out the center. Aki Berg back to get it. Berg for Lume. Coming in on the 10 second mark, the high flip. Far side blue line. Sent in wide of the net. Healy got it in there. Ragnarsson knocked it to the point. Pucks over there. That's the period. And it has been just like the first four. The Flyers have a 2 to 1 lead. One of these teams will leave Philadelphia with the edge in this series. Great first period. Big time hitting. Toronto got on the board first. Philadelphia answered with two. This presentation of the NHL at ABC coming up after this from our ABC station. Sir William Lyons, founder of Jaguar, once said, the car is the closest thing we will ever create to something that is alive. Honey, will you run out and get me something crunchy? Crunchy. I'm on it. And chewy. Crunchy and chewy. And cheesy. Crunchy, chewy, cheesy. Crunchy, chewy, cheesy. And melty. Satisfy all your cravings with Taco Bell's Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Warm flatbread covered in three melted cheeses. Wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. Mm. To get the Cheesy Gordita Crunch, think outside the bun. The NHL playoffs on ABC continue next Saturday. I love hockey season. A week from Sunday, Sydney Bristow begins an amazing new adventure. Now, when her partner goes over the edge... What are you doing? Stay back! Disarm your explosive immediately! There is only one way to save Sydney's life. Take him down. New Alias, a week from Sunday at 9, 8 central on ABC. When you can go from 0 to 60 in seconds and get 0 460. 
It's Pontiac performance season. Get 0% financing for 60 months on a 2003 Pontiac and never pay interest, ever. Or choose 4,000 total cash back on any remaining 2003 Grand Prix. See your Central Indiana Pontiac Pat dealer. A short time ago, this woman was limited by her mobility. A month ago, this man wasn't even able to get around his house. These are people who chose mobility, and they chose the scooter store. If you're living with limited mobility, call the scooter store today. I guarantee no other company will work hard to make you mobile. Listen. If we pre-qualify you and Medicare denies your claim, we'll give you your new power chair or scooter free. That's our guarantee. I expected they'd help me file some paperwork with Medicare and my insurance. I never expected them to be so nice or to work so hard to get me a power chair at no cost to me. You don't qualify for Medicare? No problem. We'll work with your insurance company, even help with financing. If there's a way, we'll find it. Call today. Find out what great links the Scooter Store will go to for you. Call 1-800-635-3400 for free information. That number again is 1-800-635-3400. Indiana's meteorologist, Kevin Gregory, weeknights at RTV6. John Saunders, Barry Melrose here in the studio. Two to one, Toronto trails the Philadelphia Flyers. Toronto got off to a good jump early. Yep. Philadelphia carried the rest, but you wonder about Alexander McGillney. Well, McGillney certainly wasn't the way he was when he was healthy and playing while he was dangerous every time he stepped on the ice. Sandin did not have the puck a lot or many offensive chapins, uh, chances. And Owen Nolan has just been a disappearing act in his playoffs. This guy should be eating the Flyers up the way he plays. He's non-existent. And it was his player, Yuskevich, that got yep. that last goal as well. He should have dropped back on that one. The Wild and the Avalanche for the Avalanche a chance to close this series, but something over the last five years that they've not done very well. Andrew Burnett, uh, get some better lumber there, Barry. Well, maybe better hands. That would be the thing that I'd be going at. Oh, he's right in the slot. Stick breaks. That stick's about worth $165, folks, so it's not a cheap stick. It shouldn't be breaking. Willie Mitchell, his first career playoff goal, and Patrick Waugh did not get in front of this one. Yeah, Patrick would like to have this one back. Nobody's in his way. Uh, he's got to make that save. Went into Butterfly off his pad, up against his hand. But Patrick's a money goaltender. He's got to make that save. The one nothing to score at that point. There's another broken stick. Man, this is unbelievable. Gabrick, their top goal scorer. Just too strong, all these guys. They got to get off the weights. Just snaps her in half. I think the trainer. These composite sticks. The trainer's going to be in some trouble when he goes, what are those guys breaking our sticks, breaking into our locker room? Whatever. That happened yeah, to you it guys, does. didn't it? It does. Not a lot of honest people in the NHL. Wild with a one to nothing lead, looking to avoid being knocked out of the playoffs by the Avalanche. Darcy Tucker fires a snapshot. A little bit of the crossbar, the post, oh. out. From now on, long distance, local, and high speed internet will be together. Voice and data networks for companies large and small will be together. The innovations of one of the world's largest internet providers and the simplicity of one global network We'll be together, together, under one name, MCI. Maybe I, I don't own a fancy building or a big shipping department yet. But Brown still takes my business seriously. I can print labels, track shipments, order a pickup right from here. And with the time I save, I can build my business. Maybe I'm not exactly part of the limousine set. But I have a driver. Small business shipping. Synchronized. UPS. What can Brown do for you?
Tonight, ABC is the only place for laughs. Come here and give me a hug. <laughs> Robin Williams in The Birdcage. ABC Tonight, 8, 7 Central. Tuesday, what's a father to do when his daughter wants to start dating? Do you really think in six months I'll be better prepared to date? No, but I'll be better prepared. <laughs> Eight simple rules. Then Jim Belushi and Dan Aykroyd go back to when it all started. Are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only 10 I see. Catch one full hour of According to Jim. Then for everyone who's ever worked too much and lost touch with their family. So you had to ask mom on a date, huh? She said yeah. Your wife said yes. Yeah. Hey, all right. The hit comedy Lost at Home, Tuesday on ABC. This is the Stanley Cup Playoffs Intermission Report. Here now, John Saunders and Barry Melrose. Welcome back to our studios. And you and I think that every week is yep. the best week during the Stanley Cup Playoffs, but it can get a little better for Mark Recchi of the Philadelphia Flyers. Chris Simpson has his story. Well, these have been pretty exciting times for the Flyers' Mark Recchi. Of course, the game winner in triple overtime Wednesday night was only surpassed by the birth of his third child Thursday morning. Well, yesterday, I sat down with the Flyer to hear about the week that was. Talk to my wife and make sure she's doing okay. And, and uh, you know, we talked about, well, I hope it doesn't go to overtime. <laughs> and sure enough, boom, <laughs> three of them. It was a long night, and uh, you know I've had a longer one, but that was <laughs> that was long. That was intense. I mean, physically, I mean, uh, every shift was uh, you know both teams were tooth and nail going at it, and uh, you know, it was fun. First overtime, can you believe? Then second. I mean, yeah. what's going through your mind as this game looks like it's never going to end? Well, I wasn't. I actually wasn't thinking too much of it then. I mean, because you know you're just trying to find enough energy to to keep going and make sure you don't make those mistakes and, and we win a hockey game, but. Uh, when it was over, I looked at the time and said, man, I've been just have enough time here. <laughs> was your wife back at home uh, watching the game on TV? Yeah, she turned it off about 10 minutes before I scored. She said she couldn't take it anymore. She was too nervous. So uh, <laughs> she turned it off. She said she turned it back on to watch the, uh, to see what was happening. And, and we, we had won the game. She didn't know I scored, though. I got to get home. I got another child in the morning. So <laughs> no, my wife's going to have a child. And uh, it's the greatest thing in life. I'm looking forward to it. We landed just after 3. Uh, I got to the house 20 to 4. Um, I got up at 5.30 and we had to be at the hospital between uh, 6 and 6.15. So. And then uh, the baby was born at 8.15. So. It's great. And it's a... Baby boy. <laughs> Name? Yeah. Austin. Yeah. Many times as a fan, you're watching a game and it's really tense and tight. You say, I was having a baby watching that game. This reality, though. Obviously a Mike Myers fan. Yeah, but, but the <laughs> bottom line is there's more to that story that Mark didn't quite mention. When his wife turned on the game after they'd won, they were interviewing JR, and they thought that Roenick had scored the goal, so he, Mark never even got credit. But very rarely you can win the Stanley Cup, and that isn't even the greatest day of your life. So uh, Mark's in for uh, uh, eventual playoffs. And imagine the stories you tell young Austin growing up. You were my inspiration. <laughs> to win the Stanley Cup. This is the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs on ABC. Yellow pencils, yellow poster notes, yellow boxers, yellow boxers. Fourteen dollars. Land career, air career, pedicure, re one hundred thirty-seven dollars. Two printers, two scanners, two tutus. Five hundred forty dollars. Keeping business expenses separate from personal expenses, priceless. Letterhead, cinnamon bread, envelope. Cancel. There are some things money can't buy. For everything business, there's Mastercard, Business Card. For over 60 years, Owens Corning has been advancing the science of insulation, roofing, siding, sound control, and more. And everything we've learned, we've put into one very special place, your home. Owens Corning, innovations for living. This is the latest. This isn't. This is the latest. This isn't. And when it comes to athlete's foot, this is the latest. This isn't. Lotrimin Ultra, the latest prescription strength medicine available without a prescription. Lotrimin Ultra, the latest advancement for relief of itching and burning. The latest cure, so ultra powerful, one use a day is all you need. Nothing's proven to be stronger or faster, and nothing's newer. Lotrimin Ultra, the killer cure. Right. 
I'll, I'll see you in Dallas. Going away on business? Yeah. Then stay someplace that has everything you need to succeed in any business. I mean, music, movies, anything. <laughs> Whatever business you're in, Courtyard has what you need to be successful. Are you okay? I'm good. Jolly good. Make five stays and earn a free weekend. Call 1-888-MARRIOTT. Courtyard, your Marriott awaits. Easter Sunday at 7, 6 central. Let my people go. ABC presents the Oscar-winning Ten Commandments. Easter Sunday at 7, 6 central. She was a victim. He raped me. And now she's a witness pitted against a defense attorney from her own firm. I have a duty to tear you up. In order to save his client. You've had 15 sexual partners. You've been busy. I'm not a nun. Will he destroy his firm? You think I want to all do right. this? Then why do it? An all-new practice, ABC Monday, 9, 8 central. Oh, man, you've got to join us. It is a party like you cannot believe. Our intermission report continues here on ABC from Philadelphia. Interesting first period as Toronto in the first 10 minutes dominated. They were able to get the first goal to take the 1-0 lead in the game, but it wouldn't last. Second 10, Philadelphia took over as they settled down, picking up a power play goal and won at even strength. Flyers lead it 2-1. That's you, but actually, I can't get Conway. A guy in the corner, big producer. What's his name? I don't know. Really? Your shirt's not written there. Ooh, it's my agent in New York. Life's good when you're Eric McCormick. Hey, it's me. I mean, I like the producer we had that meeting with last week. What's his name? It's Max Hoffman. Max Hoffman. Thank you very much. But life's better when you're Eric McCormick and you have the cell phone with a walkie-talkie. Coast-to-coast walkie-talkie service coming soon. Only from Nextel. Now this here, that's the drain plug. It lets the oil drain out into the pan. Remember, she's got a lot of mileage on her, but one day, she'll be all yours. Help keep the family car in the family with Valvoline's Max Life. Max Life, the first motor oil specially formulated to recondition used seals to help prevent leaks, helping your higher mileage engine run for a long, long time. After our naps, we'll flush the radiator. Now there's an entire line of Max Life products that'll help keep your higher mileage car around for a long time. They're going to give the ball to Detroit. T-Wolves, Sunday, 3 Eastern on ABC. Do you eat too much, drink too much? What about smoking, drugs, sex? Is addiction really out of your control? Monday, it's John Stossel with Help Me, I Can't Help Myself. Buick quality goes zero to 60. Are you ready? Are you ready? Can you believe? Now, Buick quality rewards you with zero APR. Interest-free financing for 60 months. Or choose 3000 cash back on every remarkable new rendezvous. On Century and LeSabre, both the Consumer's Digest Best Buy. Get zero for 60 or 3000 cash back on every new Buick. See your Central Indiana Buick dealer. His mom was trying to talk him into renting the more traditional look. He, of course, was leaning the other way. After all, it was his prom. And it was... Linda. So instead of a bow tie, it was a button cover and a vest instead of a cummerbund. As for mom, we can only say this. It's not what he's wearing that you should be worried about. Tuxedo packages for as little as $50. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Indiana's meteorologist, Kevin Gregory, weeknights on RTV6. The Stanley Cup Playoffs on ABC, presented by Nextel. Brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Samuel Adams, always a good decision. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Get lost in a Reese's. Welcome back, everybody. Philadelphia is the site. Game five of this series is tied at 2-2, 2-1, and Sammy Capitan has been credited 
with that first goal for Philadelphia from Janssen and Amati. Well, Ken Hitchcock has said that his role once the playoffs begin is primarily making adjustments. The big adjustment for this game was putting Kapanen on the Ronick line, and that line has accounted for both Flyers' goals, or at least been on the ice for both of them. 13-6, the shots in favor of the Flyers in that first period. We are underway in period number two. Chagmonic and Belfour, the netminders. Off the far side, it is Simon Gagne who worked it out of there. Philadelphia getting a power play goal in the first. There are only two power play chances. Sundin got hit in the face. Matt Sundin got hit with a stick in the face. Was hanging on to his head. Simon Gagne got him. There was no obviously no call on it. He may still have stitches in his lips. Intercepted. Toronto in their own end. Just underway here in period number two. Desjardins reached, could not get him. McGillney, Sundin, Roberts. Roberts into the boards, didn't hit anybody, cleared around. Reichel got it, looking for McGillney in front. It'll be played back by Desjardins. Eric Desjardins moves it up and out of the zone. Over the last uh, seven minutes, the shots, Philly 9, Toronto 1. They took control of the game. As we Ladies enter the second period, there's Sundin. The Remember, he, he had a real bad situation with his teeth and his lips and his gums before the playoffs started. And he got nicked again. Remember until the third overtime or second overtime in game three, he was wearing that jaw protector, that piece attached to his helmet to protect his mouth. Yeah, he says it helped his game taking it off, but he, he took a puck to the face and it was nasty. He had about six root canals before the playoffs started because of it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh gosh. yeah, he did. It, was, oh, yeah. it really did some damage. I know, I was no. just cringing. Not your favorite off day no. exercise. Let's all total up the uh, number that we've had of root canals in our careers. I had three in one day. That was enough. <laughs> that was absolutely enough. Cleared back into the zone. Wesley drops it off. Toronto behind their own net. Pressure being put on by Amati. Tony Amati still looking to get that first goal. Amati, good job trying to get to Ronick in the middle. Couldn't. That will be cleared in. Well, the Flyers have changed their strategy. They got Primo on Sundin now. They had, you started the game with a lot of Ronick's line on him, but they changed. They went with a bigger centerman. Aki Berg who's got a goal. Plays it back in behind the net. Berg, uh, the goal from Green and Tucker, first of the game. Kapan and Janssen and Amati to tie it. And then Yuskevich from Ronick and Amati for the lead. I don't think John LeClaire is on the bench. No, they're one short they're of the bench. They're one short. I think it's LeClaire because Brad Shear is on the left side where he normally is on this line. Chris Tarion went out in that first period after he took a hit, but apparently ready to go again. Tucker on the far side, Janssen and Weinrich out there defensively. We'll see if LeClaire ends up back on the ice. Aki Berg tipped it, couldn't control it as Janssen got it the other way. Hanses dropped it into the corner. Played uh, Brashier. Brashier gets pinned up on the boards. Healy out there. Healy held on a little bit. Moved to Brashier, not the puck. Donald Brashier dug it out. Then it got kicked back into the boards again. Aki Berg will come back to play it. And Philadelphia in a line change. Toronto seeing that, trying to catch him, and it moves to the middle. They did almost. Tucker. Tucker saw the line change, stayed out on the ice, then avoids the Primo hit as Primo went face first into the boards. Here comes Janssen. Janssen leaves it. Gagne. Gagne tried to backhand it in front. Caberlet blocked it. Gagne got it back. Gagne whistle. Penalty coming up. And it's an interference call. Is it a goaltender interference call on Keith Primo? It'll be the, if it is, it'll be the fourth. I got 25 Philly, minor penalty, interference on the goaltender, and he may get two more if he doesn't shut his mouth. There you oh, go. Oh, baby. Okay. Oh, that's heated up, boys. Take, oh, that's the fourth time the Flyers have been given a penalty, twice for Primo. <laughs> Once Gagne and once LaPointe, only once have the Leafs had a penalty for goalie interference. Is that your basic public warning or I what? I like that. Skated through the crease and caught the goal stick, and uh, I think the message was given by the referee. Well, it was given to the referees by the NHL before the playoffs started. They said, we want to make sure we protect the goalies. Toronto on the power play. Chance to get it tied up. They're all for one. Jack Monick didn't have to face a shot on that wraparound. Caberlet lost it along the board. Short ended the other way. Three on two opportunity. LaPointe blast save. Jack Monick doesn't want to stop play. Almost gave it up. Caberlet cleared it up the boards. Minute 29 left on this opportunity. Sent in around the net. Roberts. Roberts in the corner takes the hit. Sundin comes over to help. Puck up against the wall. McGillney cleared it around. Held in Svela. Svela Caberlet on the point. Blocked by Jeremy Roenick. 
Both teams will change up on their penalty killing unit. Second power play of the game for Toronto. Power plays have not mattered a lot yet. Sundin had that block to the near side. Came back to Caberlet and his pass goes to center. Boy, you won't see Caberlet make a mistake like that very often. Caberlet along the blue line could not hold it in. Two in a row. As a <laughs> oh. Get them all done at once. Yeah, right? yeah. Like I said, he always makes that mistake. <laughs> Caberlet will move it in. Caberlet looking. He's got McGillney as a trailer. Center shot. Save made. Check Monick. All the way. Robert Reichel down the chute. Nobody picked him up. Power play stolen away. McCabe a blast. That gets blocked. And that'll come to center. And a high stick. Amati got it in the face from McCabe. No call. Amati, who made that clear, then took a stick from McCabe, and he heads to the bench. It's like he was all right. Cleared up Ragnarsson. That'll be whistled offside. Tony Amati had a great block. And as he chased down the puck, he ended up getting whacked in the face. It didn't look like it was that hard. Here it is here. Ryan McCabe got him with his hand, didn't he? He didn't yeah, get him with his stick. His left hand. You know, earlier in the game, McCabe and Tucker both hit LeClaire on the same shift. McCabe into the boards on the near side. But he, you, you wonder if Amante's okay? Well, I think he turned from the shot. Oh, yeah, that's right, too. The, the shot that he blocked from the point. But, but John LeClaire is not on the bench. Ooh, that, that's a serious loss for the Flyers. He was hit twice on one shift in the first period. Let's check in with John and Barry. Guys, Minnesota is the only team in the NHL not to lose a game when leading after one or after two, and they get a 2-0 lead here, Barry. Power play goal, but look at the disorganization in the end of the Colorado Avalanche. They were not ready mentally to play this game today. Kuba has the wide open net, 2-0. And we have 16 seconds here left on this power play. What a battle off the draw with Claude LaPointe. Oh, LaPointe and Travis Green. Short-handed still Philadelphia. Janssen tried to pull it through the legs. Play back, Capitan, Capitan McCabe collide, and the power play is over. One shot on that power play for the Leafs, they're 0 for 2. Primo stood up, that's going to be whistled, came back into the zone offside. So the Flyers kill it off, it remains Flyers 2 and Leafs 1 next Saturday. Don't miss more conference semifinal action. Stanley Cup playoffs on ABC presented by Nextel. That's next Saturday, it'll be live at 3 Eastern on ABC Sports. Looking over at the flyer bench, Ronick has been facing his locker room for the longest time. I think he's got a skate off. He must be having one of them repaired. That's usually the only time you turn your back on yeah. the rink yeah, because you know that nobody can say, come on, you're up. Yeah. So the flyer is now with Ronick having a skate problem and also John LeClaire gone a little short of forwards. Shots piling up again as they have throughout this series. Flyers with a two to one edge now, 14 to seven over the Leafs in the shots. And the Flyers have the two to one lead. Rashier lost the helmet. Rashier gets stood up, Hansus the puck. Hansus trying to get it in front. Rashier plays it instead. Now Rashier clears it around. Lume was on him. Comes up the near side wall. Recky. Recky drops it off. Line changes now. Shot Hansus, save made by Eddie Belfort. Recky out there with Brashier double shifting here, and Hansich was out there as well. Cleared up the boards, Fitzgerald, and they'll head to the bench. Toronto will on the line change. Near side for Mark Recky. Head out here. Had him lined up. Rocky Berg, Primo Sard coming, got himself protected. Back for Janssen. Wide side to Weinrich. Weinrich sends it into the corner. Berg coming back. Berg around the far side. Held in Gagne again. All the way around behind the net. Berg again, they hit on Primo as they continue to do battle. Primo used his strength. Roberts gets the puck. Roberts drop pass, bad one. Toronto continuing to make turnovers here. Not getting through center, and there's the battle at center. Roberts is into it with Justin Williams. Nobody else. And McCabe right over at Primo, knowing that Primo would try to help out his teammate. Look at this scrum. Wow. Get the jaws of life out. You'd need about 20 crowbars to separate these guys. And once the scrum starts, I don't think anybody's afraid of taking a penalty by themselves. And it'd be interesting to see if these were coincidental. It was Justin Williams and Gary Roberts, and Roberts had a take-no-prisoner mentality from the start of this game. It just continues here in period number two. Hello? Listen up. Who's this? I'm you in the future. You're what? I'm you, so just listen, okay? First, do not take that job in Boston. What job? You'll see. Second, buy the Passat. The Passat? Yeah, trust me. It's one decision you'll be happy with when you become me. Oh, one more thing. When you meet Becky, run.
the Volkswagen Passat. It's well-equipped, elegantly designed, and now more affordable than ever. See your dealer today. You'll thank yourself later. Fill your glasses for a toast. Champagne? <laughs> Good move. A quality beer drinker doesn't compromise a Samuel Adams lager. Always a good decision. Michelin designed the cross-terrain SUV tires specifically for SUVs to help provide responsive handling and a smooth ride. You'd be surprised just how smooth. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Gary Roberts gets a double minor and he is not a happy man. I think our first clue was the fact that he had about 14 veins that looked like they were about to explode in his neck and his forehead. Well, he's had a bad neck, too. And right now, the veins are popping out of it, so he gets the additional minor, and the Flyers go to work on the power play. And it will be Philadelphia's opportunity to extend this lead to two goals on this power play. There you see the penalty minutes in the series so far. Pretty even. Well, Justin Williams tried to stand his ground against a much bigger man. Gagne took a hit from Roberts, and then Williams came in and said, I can do this too and play the game too. And Roberts got the extra for that shot right there. Extra minor needs a little help in the box, so as Toronto gets two in there. Now the power play. Five on four power play. Desjardins. He'll send it in off the dasher to the near side. Short-handed Toronto. Philadelphia. They've already picked up one power play goal. This is their third chance of the game. Desjardins working with Janssen along the point. Double minor was picked up by Roberts. Williams got the only minor. All for roughing. Broken stick. Janssen on the shot. That leaves that point wide open. Good coverage by Kapanen to get back there and hold it in. Jeremy Roenick. Roenick got the skate fix. John LeClaire's back on the bench. He took the skate, so everybody back. Kapanen in the middle. Wanted that shot. Couldn't get it lined up. Kapanen looking. They've got Amati on the off post on this power play. Minute seven left to go on the advantage. Third power play of the game, Philadelphia Desjardins leaves it in the corner. They got Kapanen in the high slot area, trying to find a little room a la hull. They tried to get it there, and it's out. Kelly, see how wide the defensemen are? One's on each boards for the Flyers. They're trying to spread out the penalty killers. And LeClaire's back. There's John LeClaire with a puck, his first shift here in the second period, as he didn't get out there for about six and a half minutes. Cleared on the near side to Mike Recchi. There's LeClaire, he'll go to the front. Janssen, wide side, Sundin intercepted, short and a two on one, McGillney. Sundin with McGillney, McGillney hit the post! Another post! For the second time, Toronto has banged one off the iron. And another odd man rush at a short-handed chance. And McGillney and Sundin combined, nothing out of it. Move back in by Primo. Primo dumping for Recchi, Recchi, Primo, LeClaire on the power play. Back up to the point, five left on the advantage. Shot deflected in front, covered up underneath Caberlet, and he'll get a whistle. And remember we said they're spreading the defenseman out? Well, Matt Sundin read it, and he picked the puck off the pass from Kim Janssen right here. Picked it off. Now watch him take his time and know he has Mogilny with him. Beautiful pass. Quick shot, goal post. Tucker hit the other post in the first period for Toronto. But I'm convinced that some of the mistakes the Flyers are making on their power play is because McGillney and, and Sundin just strike sheer terror into yeah. your heart. I mean, you're scared <laughs> to death when you've got the puck on the blue yeah. line. You maybe hesitate to make sure you make the right play, and they cut the pass. Kim Janssen, he probably grew up idolizing Matt Sundin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In Sweden, he looks over, they go, oh, Lordy. Staley gets it out of there. Power play is over. They did not get a shot on that power play, and Philadelphia gave up the shorthanded chance that Toronto could not convert on. So we're back to five on five. Green with a hit on the far side. That's why he's back in the lineup. Travis Green, who had a rib injury, getting back in in the last game, and he brings physicality. There's a check on Tucker. Good play by Iskavich, who just met him with the blue intercept to Green. Save, check Matic didn't know where it was. He looked behind him, but he made the save two on one. Caberlet's the only man in the middle. Shot, save, rebound, deflected near side off Marty Murray. Murray in a 
two on one chance and a rebound setting. They get back on side, kicked in by Primo. What a play Keith Primo made. Oh. He is the guy that took his man and sprung the two on one loose. Cabin and up on the forecheck, Caberle. Philadelphia trying to squeeze off the near side boards. Cleared in on side. Looking in the middle, Fitzgerald. Oh. Carry and gave him the ball. Hit put on Jeremy Roenick. Oh. Put it up the boards, but not out. Another two on one. Three on one. Tony Amati, Desjardins, Terrian. Looking Amati, Amati lost control of the puck. Three on one, and Amati couldn't do it. Tony Amati tips it back to the point. Roenick there to cover. Roenick drops it. Lume. Lume will circle. People still getting up off the ice. Held in by Jeremy Roenick. Here's Amati again. Amati takes the body. Tied back up by Bird. And Desjardins off his stick. Toronto Maple Leafs are trying too hard to hit people now. Their defensemen are getting trapped and they're giving up odd man rushes. And they're lucky. They're only down by a goal. Ten minutes here. Almost expired in the second period as it opens up a little bit more. Bird tipped it ahead. Played back deeper into the zone by Murray to Janssen. Janssen moved it by Healy. Tried to set it up in the middle. Did. Good play to the net. Shot. Save made off Murray's chance and the collision in front. I think Eddie Belfour is going to get warned here. Brashear stopped before he was on top of Belfour, and Belfour reached out and poked him. And I think he's getting a lecture from one of the refs now, Don Kowarski. And Eddie's going, it's okay, I'm all right. You're watching the NHL and ABC Sports Championship Dome. Russian word for loser? It's Primakov! Ladies and gentlemen, visiting from Western Russia, the parents of right winger Alex Primakov. Want to get away? Now you can. Fly Southwest Airlines with fun fares as low as $49 each way. You are now free to move about the country. Keys, keys. Okay, bye. Introducing the 270 horsepower Passat W8. How you use it is entirely up to you. Drinks before lunch? Uh, water's fine for me. Uh, water for me, too, but with lemon, please. I'll have a Sam Adams, please. Hmm. Make that two Sam Adams. Oh, I'll have a Sam also. Me, four. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Never miss an opportunity to enjoy a tasty Samuel Adams lager, especially when it's on someone else's tab. Samuel Adams, always a good decision. Well, you know Mark Recchi is used to the pressure of playoff hockey, but his wife Alexa, on the other hand, couldn't quite handle it. During uh, game four, she had to turn off the TV after the first overtime period. She just couldn't handle the pressure. Hopefully, she's watching today. Guys? Uh, the pressure of giving birth, probably one out there. It helps that Austin has now been born. That's <laughs> right. At that point, she was still with child. And Mark better not say anything about pressure to her. That'll be cleared back into the middle. Up ice comes Jeremy Ronan. That'll be flipped in. Got blocked by you, by Glenn Wesley, rather. Back into the zone. Owen Nolan, that one got overskated. A little bit deeper to McCabe. McCabe will drop it. Miskavich comes. 17 8 the shots in favor of the Flyers. They are again shutting down the Leafs. The opportunities came early for Toronto. And uh, as far as the shots are concerned, they've gone away. Chances, though, have gone off the post. A couple of goals uh, could have been that ended up hitting the iron. Back in behind the net, it'll be held up there by Eddie Belfour. Four check, putting the heat on Justin Williams, circled side to side, and that'll end up in the seats. She was a rape victim, and now she is a witness facing a defense attorney from her own firm. In order to save his client, will he destroy his firm? The all new practice Monday, 9 Eastern, 8 Central on ABC. You know, guys, in watching the coaches and their adjustments, the Flyers started with Ronick on Sundin. Sundin's line, the first 10 minutes of the game, played very well. They switched, and Keith Primo, at even strength, has gone against Sundin, and it's been a pretty good job for them in watching him check. Caverlet got it up ice. A little run, drawn back, shot just wide. Save made, check Monick. Roman check Monick get out just enough on Sundin to block it. What a player Matt Sundin is. 
Sundin has put on such a show. He has a goal and three assists so far in this series. I agree with JD that the Keith Primo's line's done a pretty good job, but all Matt Sundin needs is one shot and one chance. Just as I was saying, Primo's been great against him. He gets the chance. Stala right in front of his own goaltender, Eddie Belfort. Stala played it off the wall for Caberlet. Came to Roberts. Roberts' pass gets blocked. Gary Roberts has made some atrocious passes in this game. Leclerc drops it in for Recky. Roberts came back, dropped it off the wall, intercepted again. Hansus in front. It got deflected on the pass. Sundin will get it back, leaves it for McGillney. McGillney tried to go over the line himself, couldn't get it there. Toronto changing, hustling. Leclerc! Save Belfort. Rebound Leclerc, and it goes wide, and a penalty coming on the takedown in front of Eddie Belfort. Interference. Big effort by Michael Hansus. He's going. Oh, he's going? Did he bump the goaltender or bump the defenseman? Of Philadelphia. Here's that Sundin chance. He got around Terry and cut to the middle and off the toe. Check Monarch was aggressive. He made a toe save there that was gorgeous. Here's the penalty on Michael Hansus. Well, I got to tell you, I know the refs have been told to protect the goalies, but some of these calls are for fairly incidental contact. That's the fifth one that Eddie Belfort has drawn. And Hansus was trying to stop, and Belfort was four feet out of the paint. I agree with you fully. It looked like he was trying to stop. He got shoved some and just barely slid into Belfort. Boy, that's five of them, and only one the other way. So the penalty is goalie interference at 12-15. The second goalie interference call we've had. Primo picked up the other one in this game. Now the third power play opportunity. The Toronto Maple Leafs have an opportunity to get this thing tied up. They have gone three for 17 so far in this series. Working on the point, they've got Wesley and Kamerlake. Shot check. Monty kind of reach out to get that through a screen. And boy, I'll tell you, in front of the net, anybody standing there is very careful not to even touch the jersey of the goaltender. Shot. McKay. That one deflected as Owen Nolan had moved in, looking for the rebound. Green's got it. Philadelphia's staying back now. They've changed up in the PK. Trying to find a lane. Can't. Tucker dropped it off. Shot. That was Nolan cutting through, trying to tip it. It'll be clear. Gary, they keep calling Gary interfer uh, goalie interference like this. I'm going to unretire. He can play again. <laughs> Just stand uh, there. Not quite. You still got to be able to get up when you fall <laughs> down, on. though. You got bad knees. That's all I'm saying. Your knee replacements. You still got to be able to get up in the morning, for God's sake. No, that's easy to play goal now when he, uh, anybody comes around. In the old days, it was a battle, especially across the street in the old spectrum where the Flyers used to play. Caberlet gets it ahead. Intercepted again. Sammy Cabinet. Short ended opportunity. Oh, Offside. Man. Take a look at our Michelin storyline here in game five. This series is tied at 2 2. Berg, his first career playoff goal, and Yuskevich to the fourth of his career both today. And our Michelin replays will go back to the first period where the Flyers picked up a little traction. Power play goal, slight deflection by Sammy Kappen, and then a turnover that Jeremy Roney gobbled up. Dmitry Yuskevich made it 2 to 1. Our Michelin storyline and replays. Here we've got 47 seconds left on the power play for the Leafs and the faceoff coming outside the zone. The Toronto power play was 11th overall during the season. Philadelphia 9th in penalty kill. Toronto's not been able to take advantage of their power play opportunities here in the series so far. Long way to go in this one though. Third Roberts up on the board. McGillney had it battered away. Sundin setting a little pick on the near side. Pretty good interference right there. He rubbed his man out along the wall. Back to McGillney. Let's it go to Sundin. Sundin will try and back it into the corner. Did. It was spread by Terry. Terry got it around, not out. Stala. Stala with 16 left on the advantage. Roberts, Sundin is in front of the net. McGillney in the corner. Roberts takes a little hook, got knocked down. Desjardins trying to lift it. Did. Usually with Toronto's power play, they like to get the pass right across the top of the crease to Sundin. But they had no setup time, Bill. They were facing the glass on most of that penalty kill because the Flyers' pursuit didn't give them enough time to pull it off the wall. Two shots on the power play. Lume in the middle with five on five hockey again with the Flyers protecting a two to one lead. Williams. Williams drops it. Odd man opportunity deflected right in on Belfort. It's in the crease. Scores! Simo Gagne! Is that big after a penalty kill? Turnover inside the flyer zone. Lume the defenseman, now he's trapped. 
That's the defenseman up ice, and look at him go. Justin Williams with a great burst of speed. But watch this. This is one of the only times in this series, I think, that Ed Belfour has lost sight of the puck. He does not know where it is. He was looking around. Gagne knew where it was. Bang, the Flyers lead 3-1. to one. Watch out for goalie interference. <laughs> Primo went right through the crease. A 3-1 to one lead. That is a 5-on-5 five five goal. And the Philadelphia Flyers extra effort of Simon Gagne puts them on top with 5.13 left here in the second period on top by two. Toronto's the only team in the playoffs so far to overcome a two-goal deficit. Can they do it again? Centering pass bounces off Jack Monick and is whistled as he holds it up against the post. There's Simon Gagne, the second effort on Eddie Belfour, put it home. The Flyers three and the Leafs one. Custom crepe for Stanley Cup, $2,700. 30 pairs of white gloves, size large, $360. Silver polish, $9. Spending every waking moment with hockey's holy grail, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard, official card of the NHL and lifelong fan of Phil Pritchard, keeper of Lord Stanley's Cup. Fill your glasses for a toast. Champagne? <laughs> Good move. A quality beer drinker doesn't compromise a Samuel Adams lager. Always a good decision. Is there a problem? Problem? Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you whacked me pretty hard there. Whack? No, I might have tapped it parking, but I didn't whack it. Yeah, you slammed into me there. Slam. Yeah, slam. Look at this. It's fine. That's misaligned. You can't replace that. Well, I'll have to get that in Europe you know, someplace. Okay, well, I'm glad. Oh, look who's here. I'm glad you're here to see this. I can't drive this home, and my wife's upstairs giving blood. I don't know if I mentioned that. The Passat wagon. It only looks like a million bucks. Oh, oh, I'm not an internist, but I think I got some bleeding going on here. It may just be coincidence, but since the Darcy Tucker penalty in the first period, it has been all flyers, including 16 shots and three goals. It was one nothing Toronto at the time. Tucker took a penalty for closing his hand on the puck. Flyers tied it up. A cave shot gets blocked off the draw. That was 13-39 of that first period. And since then, Philadelphia has been in charge of this game. It's really when they settled down, too, isn't it? They started out running around, and Toronto took advantage of it. Now Toronto's got a battle back from a two-goal deficit to being upshot 20 to 11. That was set in on the offside face-off back at center. Our Dodge intermission report is coming up. John and Barry will be along to get you caught up on what's going on in that wild Avs game. You can take that either way you'd like. In the military, high note. Dan High Note is the man. It is a wild Avs game. Flyers have already lost a two-goal lead in this series. They did that in game one seven different times in this series. A lead has vanished for one of these teams seven but, different times. But watch the Flyers play their style and their system when Toronto comes out of the zone. Flyers aren't giving up much and they're pressuring the men with a puck all the time. Aberle got it up the near side. And it'll be moved by Darcy Tucker wide. Svela guns it in the other way. Side to side to side. Flip back up. Green held it in. Knocked away behind the net. ABC's coverage of the Stanley Cup playoffs in Philadelphia. This is game five of a series tied at 2 2. With both of John Davidson, all of our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. I'm great to have you with us here. This has been a magnificent series. Tucker drops it. Shot. That one got blocked. A little opening for a moment for Paul Healy. Healy's not played very much on that fourth line in this game. In fact, the fourth line in the series for Toronto's not played very much. It has been one of the advantages in the overtime games. There have been two of them that Philadelphia's had. Back into the middle is Renberg with it. Renberg centering pass all the way through. Got the back and behind the net by Fitzgerald. Renberg reaching in trying to help. Had it blocked with the near side. Good play by Weinrich who freed that one up. Still controlled down low. Defenseman moving in. The shot blocked. Cleared up. Jeremy uh, Brashear knocked down. Brashear hoped there was going to be a call. Didn't get one. Deep. He just kind of gave the wave off to one of the refs, too. This series will move back to Toronto Monday, and this game six will be seen either on ESPN or ESPN2. 
That will be on Monday night from Toronto. That's guaranteed because it's 2-2 right now. And how about if it goes seven games, it'll be the next night, Tuesday night. Yeah, but dabba do. We like seven. Yes, we do. <laughs> Wesley drops it off. 254 here to go in the period. That's uh, Wesley wants it up. Did he pay for it? Oh, he got leveled at the other end of the ice. He and Wesley. Meanwhile, Matt Sundin just about got sprung loose for a breakaway. Sundin knocked down behind the net, held in by Roberts. That was Primo put that check on at the other end. Shot check. Monic bounces up in the air, but not behind him. Oh, Gagne was without a stick. The Flyers oh. already were down a man. It was Chuck Monic, man. He got nailed by Gary Roberts, and he was incensed. Aki Burke takes it behind the net. You're going to get incensed because you get hit in this series. Prepare to be constantly incensed. I think it's because of what he's seen going on at the other end. Yeah. Played back by Tarion. Tarion trying to flip it out of the zone. Got it there. Here's Kapanen who can fly. Sammy Kapanen. That deflects into the corner. Kapanen couldn't get it through Aki Berg. And that goes over the glass. Faceoff stays in the Toronto zone. Catch a full hour of According to Jim with special guest star Dan Aykroyd. It'll be coming your way Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central on ABC. Jim Belushi, a big hockey fan, Chicago Blackhawk fan. And they used to be in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's a broken stick back here. Jack Monick's trying to get the attention of the officials and now make it back into that area. You're darn right he is. I mean, that was, it could stop a, yeah. a dump in. It could stop a clearing attempt. Get the debris out of here. Jack Monick voted the team MVP by his fellow teammates. It's always a great honor. Each team does that. Players vote on it. Roman Jack Monick got it. He had a magnificent season, finishing second in goals against, third in save percentage during the regular year. Never gets many points for style, but full marks for results. Cleared around uh, behind the net. Toronto changing. Shot just wide. Toronto had uh, Jonas Holton, who just came out on the ice. Found that puck right at the blue line. Sent back in by Jeremy Roenick. Baylor will come back to play it. Eddie Belfort just tip past that one. Bailey, far side. The player was up in the four check here. Up the center, intended for Hoagland. He could not catch up to it. Get put on. The player's got the puck. The player also has got two flyers in the middle, but it was intercepted by Caverlay and clear. Did, right. he, did he make a play? Spela went flying up, took himself out of the play. That was a mini odd man rush again. All right, Greggy's good pass. A little more room. Shot on, knocked away. The player the opportunity. Held in by Hansus on the uh, near side and ducked behind the net. Toronto trying to find a way now with only a minute left to go in the second period. As Philadelphia's got the two goal lead, out shooting him 21 to 13. LeClaire still out there. LeClaire moving into the middle, trying to drop it back to the point. Instead, it's moved by Green up ice. Toronto with a level 8 1 here. Check my hanging on. There's nobody there of another color until Green comes back on. Careful boys. Both sides. Neither one of these teams can really afford a penalty right now, giving the other team a power play. 3 1 in favor of Ken Hitchcock's Flyers with 40.7 to go in the second period. I, I know that look uh, on Ken Hitchcock's face. That's the look of what do our guys have to do in the offensive zone to generate a call? Michael Hansus looked like he got hog tied in behind, and then John LeClaire got his stick taken out of his hands. But I think the game, I mean, we, we talked about the goaltender interference other than, other than some of those calls, which the refs have been told to call very tight in their defense. They've done a terrific job of letting these guys decide what's going on out here. Yeah. Face off, and the point's in for the drop against Sundin. Sundin's always been a great face off man in the offensive zone. But Bill, why wouldn't they use a right handed guy? The Flyers. Somebody to drive back into the corner. Now Primo's going now, to take it. Both of them are left handed. For one thing, Jeremy Roenick just went off, and he's their one right hander. Yeah. It's Hans Zeus, LaPointe, and Primo. Sundin won the draw, the shot by McGillney is blocked. Beautiful face off win. Intercepted McGillney. There's plenty of time here. Knocked away again, but out the center. They've got to get back on side. Just no. sent in by Wesley. Desjardins over there. Sundin moved in on him, trying to run him over. Primo played it up off the dasher. Again, it comes to center. 19 seconds left to go. LaPointe moves it into the zone and just feathered it to the corner. Back for it is Wesley. 12 left to go here in the period. Flyers leading by a score of 3-1. to one. McGillney from the red line intended for Roberts. 
Rocky Berg scored the Toronto goal the first of the game. Kevin and Yuskevich and Gagne have answered and we'll go to the third period with the Flyers leading it by a score of three to one. A chance to go up three two in this series for Philadelphia and Gagne strong game at both ends of the ice. We'll be back the Dodge intermission report coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations Flyers three and the Leafs one. Drinks before lunch? Uh, water's fine for me. Uh, water for me too, but with lemon, please. I'll have a Sam Adams, please. Hmm. Make that two Sam Adams. Oh, uh, I'll have a Sam also. Me four. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Never miss an opportunity to enjoy a tasty Samuel Adams lager, especially when it's on someone else's tab. Samuel Adams, always a good decision. I won again. You lose. I win. Oh no, my, my batteries are dying. Presenting our longest lasting Energizer Max ever. Energizer Max. Do you have the bunny inside? Mr. Johnson. Mm. Mr. Johnson. Mm. The vet will see you now. What do you care? You've got the goodness of Reese's peanut butter and milk chocolate. Get lost in a Reese's. The NHL playoffs on ABC continue next Saturday. I love hockey season. When you can go from zero to 60 in seconds and get zero for 60, it's Pontiac performance season. Get 0% financing for 60 months on a 2003 Pontiac and never pay interest, ever. Or choose 4,000 total cash back on any remaining 2003 Grand Prix. See your Central Indiana Pontiac Pack dealer. It's gonna be okay. I'll help with the boys. And Ben said that will help you sort out the life insurance stuff. There's no insurance. We got a policy when Trevor was born, but That'll be gone before the end of the year. We always meant to get more. We just never got around to it. What am I gonna do now? Don't leave your family's future at risk. Every year, thousands of families are faced with the reality that there isn't enough life insurance. You can get $500,000 of life insurance for less than a dollar a day from United of Omaha, a mutual of Omaha company. $500,000 of coverage from a company you can trust for less than a dollar a day. Call 1-800-479-0505 right now, and we'll rush you this free booklet that can help you determine if you have enough insurance and the right kind. There's no obligation. Call now. See what's new at 11, Monday on the RGB6 Nightcast. This is the Dodge Stanley Cup Intermission Report. Here now, John Saunders and Barry Melrose. Philadelphia with a 3-1 to one lead. This has been a hard-fought series. A couple of games in multiple overtime. It looks like it's wearing on the Leafs. Philly had to, or Toronto had to win that overtime game because they just don't have the depth of Philadelphia. Philly's got so many lines, so many guys that can do the bang, and Toronto doesn't have those type of players, not enough of them. They would fall down 3-2 to two, but go back to yeah. Canada. The Wild against the Avalanche, and yes, it's a chance for Colorado to close them out, but they have had problems doing that the last five years. Willie Mitchell gets a shot past Patrick Watt, actually went through him, one to nothing. At the other end, Manny Fernandez playing pretty well. Playing very, very well. He's very aggressive. He's very confident. He's used to this role, though, coming in after Rolson. Rolson played most of the uh, uh, big games this year for Minnesota, although they say that Fernandez is not, is not the number two goaltender. Philippe Kuba. Talk about looking at a wide open net as Patrick Waugh got knocked out of there. Two to nothing is a score again. Everybody on the ice is out of position for the Colorado Avalanche, including Patrick Waugh and Kuba. Just right. all he had to do was shoot high, and he had a goal, and that's what he did. And then Pascal Dupuis comes up with a goal, and again, this is one that goes through Patrick Waugh. You don't normally see that. Two long shots go by Patrick Waugh. That is never, never happens come playoff time. That just shows that the Avalanche weren't ready to play mentally. Over the last five years, the Avalanche are 10 and 13, Barry, with a chance to eliminate. Is that just 
just saying, we got so much talent, we figure we can roll it out and win any time? I think they weren't focused today. I think they were focused on other things, and I think that's been one of the things that's happened to them in the past. Too much talent. They fall asleep sometimes. And again, the Wild have never given up a second period of lead this year. Simone Gagne, talking about pouncing on a puck, crashed in the net. The Flyers are up 3-1. The Dodge Stanley Cup Intermission Report, brought to you by Dodge, the official road team of the NHL. Grab life by the horns, Dodge. Hey! That thing got a hammy? Yeah. Sweet. The all-new Dodge Ram Heavy Duty. Did you mean the Charger? Because you know that's got a Hemi too. You're right. <laughs> now with a 345 horsepower, 5.7 liter Hemi Magnum. Hit it! Ram Heavy Duty. Enough muscle to grab Motor Trend's 2003 Truck of the Year award. Maybe I, I don't own a fancy building or a big shipping department yet. But Brown still takes my business seriously. I can print labels, track shipments, order a pickup right from here. And with the time I save, I can build my business. Maybe I'm not exactly part of the limousine set. But I have a driver. Small business shipping. Synchronized. UPS. What can Brown do for you? From now on, Long distance, local, and high speed internet will be together. Voice and data networks for companies large and small will be together. The innovations of one of the world's largest internet providers and the simplicity of one global network will be together. Together, under one name MCI. Somewhere between Wyoming and Nebraska, there was nothing. Somewhere between 65 and 70, a law was broken. Somewhere between stop it and you're grounded, a mom pulled over. And somewhere between where you are and where you're going, there's a Super 8. See you along the way. She was a victim. He raped me. And now she's a witness pitted against a defense attorney from her own firm. I have a duty to tear you up. In order to save his client. You've had 15 sexual partners. You've been busy. I'm not a nun. Will he destroy his firm? You think I want to all do right. this? Then why do it? An all-new practice, ABC Monday, 9, 8 central. Tuesday, Jim Belushi and Dan Aykroyd go back to when it all started. Are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only 10 I see. Catch one full hour of According to Jim. Then, for everyone who's ever worked too much and lost touch with their family... So you had to ask Mom on a date, huh? She said, yeah. Your wife said yes. Yeah. Hey, all right. The hit comedy Lost at Home. ABC 2. This is the Dodge Stanley Cup Intermission Report. And welcome back to our studios. John Saunders alongside of Barry Melrose. There are several paths and ways to get to the National Hockey League, some more likely than others. Probably none less likely than the path followed by Dan Hynote of the Colorado Avalanche. Growing up, it was kind of like I always knew that's what I wanted to do. You want to, you know, go save the world. And, uh -oh. Solve some big cases, help a lot of people. You know, help the government, help the USA. All through high school, I wanted to go in the FBI. You know, so I, I picked West Point, seeing as how it was a military school. It's so tough mentally when you go there that it's, it's a great place to learn who you are and what you can take and what you're capable of. I can imagine if he's still in the Army, he would fit in right in there. If you look at on the ice, he would do anything that's needed to make the team win. And so when you come to the NHL and you're sitting there and you're having these hard times and your coach is yelling at you and, you know, things aren't going right, you realize, you know, this isn't tough. What was tough is what I did at West Point. wake up, you need to shine your shoes, get your uniform all squared away. You need to memorize the, the main columns in the newspaper because at some point during the formation, an, an older officer or older classmate can come up to you and ask you, you know, what's in the paper? If you don't know any of this stuff, it counts against you in your military grade. And then after your classes, you got hockey practice. It's a pretty awful in practice, so. And he says that because he's the worst practice player ever in history. <laughs> no. And everybody on the team knows it. No, he's not a practice player. And after hockey practice, you got, you know, dinner. Somewhere in between there, you have to finish all your homework, keep your room straight. You get pretty tired by 11 o'clock. 
just so happened the Avs were at uh, one of our games against a better team, and they were out to scout somebody else, and then they saw us play, and then it kind of just went from there. And, you know, now it's helpless, because I'm sitting here watching it on CNN, and these guys are over there, you know, defending our country, you know, putting their lives on the line, and here I am playing a game. We're 100% behind them, so, you know, keep up the good work. And the way I hear it, Dan Hynode has not ruled out going back into law enforcement after hockey's done. Well, I'll tell you, from a coach's point of view, we'd like more guys to go to Army before they get yeah. to the NHL. Discipline problems would really be negated from that point on. But Dan Hynode has really turned into a valuable player for the Avs. He's turning into a Mike Keane type player, an emotional leader, a guy that they can play uh, in uh, energy situations, go out and get a big hit. He scored a goal in this series already, played very, very well. So he's really getting a niche with this team and a role with this team. And that's what great teams do. They have the great players, but they also have the role guys that are important. You also know that he talks a lot because we had a he mic talks an awful lot, lot during this season. Didn't learn that in the Army. More fun guys to listen to. This is the Dodge Intermission Report. You describe yourself as a moderately risky investor. In that case, how comfortable would you be if in the short term your portfolio value declined by say 30 percent? How short is short term? You have to ride these things out. Not acceptable. I'm looking farther down the road than that. I'm going to suggest we modify your risk tolerance to fairly conservative. Yeah. Building wealth begins with a relationship, and our financial advisors know it. UBS Payne Weber. Satisfy all your cravings with Taco Bell's cheesy gordita crunch. Mmm, crunchy. Warm, pillowy flatbread. Mmm, chewy. Covered in three melted cheeses. Cheesy. All wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. Empty. To get the cheesy gordita crunch, think outside the bun. Cinema. I don't drink. Where reality TV ends. Girls go on spring break to find guys like me. No. The real movie begins. Cancun, baby! No actors. I'm still a good kid, though, right? Yep. No script. So any girls that want to make out or something? No limits. Oh, my God. <laughs> the real Cancun. Only in theaters April 25th. I'm not drunk. Feeling my nipples. Rated R for strong sexuality, nudity, language, and partying. Starts Friday, April 25th. T-Wolves, Sunday, 3 Eastern on ABC. Wednesday, George's son is caught peeping on his sister's friends. What do you think of my little brother? He's adorable. Too bad about his eye. What's wrong with his eye? Ah! Now wait till George finds out. Relax, you probably can't even see anything through it. Oh, hey, Olivia. <laughs> George Lopez, all new after my wife and kids, ABC Wednesday. This is our Dodge Intermission Report from Philadelphia. The two netminders, Roman Czechmonic, the sliding save, looking for the win. He's got the lead, Eddie Belfour has had a couple get by him, including that one. Gagne jammed at home. The Flyers up by two. This has been the Dodge Stanley Cup Intermission Report, brought to you by Dodge, the official road team of the NHL. Grab light by the horns, Dodge. The Stanley Cup playoffs on ABC will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This is out of control. How am I supposed to manage all of this? No, that's not what I mean. Look, I just want this to work with that. That's not a solution. What am I paying you for? Hello? Hey, how you doing? You want to grab some dinner? Oh, it's you. You don't call for ages, and I'm just supposed to say, hi, great, dinner, fine. No, yeah, but 
but I have nothing. Did you hibernate or something? Whoa. Oh. Hey, go around. Shh. Yeah. Look up, see blue, look back blue. You must be so hungry. Oh, yeah. Wednesday, six girls fight for Andrew's heart, and things get vicious. I need to be away from her. She's irritating me. The Bachelor. Then, we'll take two ordinary women and transform them into extraordinary beauties. I'm about to see my bride, minus 10 years. An all-new Extreme Makeover, after The Bachelor Wednesday, starting at 9, 8 central on ABC. It's gonna be okay. I'll help with the boys. And Ben said that he'll help you sort out the life insurance stuff. There's no insurance. We got a policy when Trevor was born, but that'll be gone before the end of the year. We always meant to get more. We just never got around to it. What am I gonna do now? Don't leave your family's future at risk. Every year, thousands of families are faced with the reality that there isn't enough life insurance. You can get $500,000 of life insurance for less than a dollar a day from United of Omaha, a mutual of Omaha company. $500,000 of coverage from a company you can trust for less than a dollar a day. Call 1-800-479-0505 right now, and we'll rush you this free booklet that can help you determine if you have enough insurance and the right kind. There's no obligation. Call now. Indiana's meteorologist, Kevin Gregory, weeknights at RTV6. The Stanley Cup Playoffs on ABC, presented by Nextel, brought to you by Nextel. Life's better when your cell phone has a walkie-talkie. Dodge, the official road team of the NHL. Grab life by the horns. Dodge. Labatt Blue, imported from Canada. Look up, see blue. And MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Back here in Philadelphia, home fans hoping this will be the game where the Flyers get to go up, take it back to Toronto with a chance to win it. Gary Thorne, Bill Clement, and John Davidson, welcome back, everybody. Toronto has trailed by two goals in the game before they came back to win it. This is different. This is where the Flyers are supposed to flex their defensive muscles. I mean, they tied for, with the Devils for the best defensive record in the league, but there are still some dangerous Leafs that are getting chances. Well, to me, you look at Toronto, you have to think Matt Sundin and his line. Matt's is the only forward to have at least three shots in his goal for, on goal for his team. And he needs to provide offense for his line now. Underway, third period. It'll be an advantage, three games to two, to the winner in this one. And Owen Nolan, and brought over to get some offense for Toronto. Again, does not have a shot in this game. He's had only ten shots in the five games, and has not picked up a goal. See whether or not the third period is where he comes alive for the Leafs. Drop pass, Primo goes to the front. Eddie Belfort came up to try and draw yet another penalty. He just put his arms up on Primo, didn't get it. Roberts will chase it in. Ragnarsson took it away. HR Dan, Philadelphia changing, just flips it out of the zone. Uh, Philadelphia, Tony Amani out there, fine play to get control. Couldn't keep it though. Ty Domi in. Domi dropped it. Backhander goes wide. First chance wide of the net for Jonas Hogan. Here comes Amani. Amani. Nobody with him for the moment. Kapanen heads to the middle now. Bounce up towards Kapanen to get it. Kapanen back. Shot. Save made. Ragnarsson the chance. And he fell for there to knock it away. In the middle. Loose. Amadi. Trying to set up a shot for himself there. Couldn't get it. Ragnarsson. Out on defense. Philadelphia changing. Over to Recky. Got himself in offside. Well, the Flyers have cured one problem this season that plagued them last year in the playoffs in their series against the Ottawa Senators. They only scored two goals in five games last year against Ottawa. They have scored that many, 16 in five games against Toronto. But the challenge now is to flex their defensive muscles. The Flyers scored three goals during the regular season. That was almost always enough to win. And here the Leafs have flip-flopped Ty Domi and Owen Nolan. Nolan's now on with the green line. Domi was on with Reichel, so the Leafs are trying to spark their team and get Owen Nolan going. Here comes Recky. Recky the chance wide. Back when it said Owen Nolan, uh, rather Ty Domi, was going to get more time in this game because he had not played much in that triple overtime game. Domi, however, under 10 minutes through two periods so far in this one. That'll be chased back into the zone. Philadelphia will force Toronto to go to full length of the ice to get any chances. 
Oh, Nolan sends it in. 22 14 the shots in favor of the Flyers. Recky dropped that one off, played up by Claude LaPointe. LaPointe coming hard. LaPointe left it. Brian Shearer was skated. Hunter came over, put the hit on. Navarre stepped up, but that's going to be whistled on a delayed offside call. We'll check in with John and Barry. Well, down 3 0. You want to see what Colorado could do in the opening minutes of period number three, and Steven Reinprecht gets a goal. Well, they thought it was a 5 o'clock start, not a 3 o'clock start. Reinprecht finally danced Fernandez's armor and puts it in. 3 to 1. We'll keep you up to date. Let you know if they mount a comeback. Colorado leading in that series, but not ready to go at it today. Keeping away from the wild, they were. They may be able to extend that. Keep you updated on it. Put the way at center. After that, Ely deeper into the zone. Chagmanic came back to play. Roman Chagmanic has had to make 13 saves in this game. 19 picked up Andy Goldfort at the other end offside. Guys, I thought Pat Quinn, the coach of the Leafs, may come back with a Sundin line every third shift, but he starts by playing four lines. Now, to the folks at home who aren't quite sure, the, ho the, the home team has the last change. Toronto has to put their players on first. And then Philadelphia matches. And again, guys, it's Carrion and Desjardins, the defense pairing in the primo line to try to stop Matt Sundin, the great leaf captain. And so far, that has worked. Sundin has picked up three shots. He and Brian McCabe both have three to lead Toronto. There is Sundin sending it in. Alexander McGillney back from the concussion. Took him out of the last game. Back out on the ice. The drop pass will be intercepted. For McGillney for a couple of periods. A minus one and only one shot. What a collision there between Glenn Wesley and Simon Gagne. And boy, that looked like it had busted knee potential for both of them. They both head off the ice. Off the flip in on a line change. Here's Roberts. Roberts couldn't get that puck to settle. So he did set him up. Comes to the near side. McGillney was over here. Rolled away though. Want to get it out of there to Tony Amati. Amati. Johnson the defenseman behind him. There he is. Johnson. And he ripped it high over the glove side. May have gone off the catching glove of Eddie Belfour. Long shift for the Sun D line. McGillney down the middle. He's open. Shot. Deflected. Never got through. Comes to the near side. And he gets run over by his own player. Checkmatic gets back up. He got knocked down by a flyer. Cabrillet chance. Saved by Checkmatic. Back to McGillney off his stick in the wall. Now that was goaltender interference. That Tony, was. Tony Amati just took him out. Hey, what though? Sundin and McGillney had a long, 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 long shift. The Flyers played two lines against them. You know why they can last? Because every time they come to the blue line, regardless of how many Flyers are back, the Flyers back in. But how much strength do you have for your next shift? That's my question. Minute 30 on that last shift for Sundin and McGillney and Roberts. Back it comes to LeClaire. Lume stepped up and blocked it. Shot in. Save made by Czech Monik. Michael put it in from the blue line on a little wrist shot. That'll be dumped into the middle of LeClaire. Lume in front of him. Kicked it in on goal. Eddie Belfour knocked it away. Rocky Berg the hit. Cleared up off the dash or not out. Rocky held it in. Rocky Hansis and LeClaire on this line. Centered for LeClaire. Got blocked by Lume. Down goes Rocky Berg. Still loose. Near side corner. That's LeClaire battling away. John LeClaire and Yerke Lume have met on ice here throughout this game. From the point. This gave it to shot. Trickled in. Not out of the zone. Magnuson dumps it behind the net. They hit put on again. Lume, they need a change. Toronto does. And Dome sends it out. They'll make the change right here. Skavitz came back to get it. 14-38 left to go. Third period. Flyer two-goal lead. Green in the middle. Travis Green has to drop pass Owen Nolan. Nolan trying to get it back to Green. Left it up and over everybody. In the corner. Went by Tucker. Played back out by Gagne. And we handled by Murray. And Wesley drops it to the near side. Philadelphia completes a change behind the play. And there's Desjardins. Clock ticking away. And that's in Philadelphia's favor. That will be whistled. And we'll check in with Chris Simpson. Chris. Thanks, Gary. Well, when I asked Flyers GM Bob Clark what, how he would describe Roman Czechmanic's style, he said, I don't think he really has one. But he said the advantage is he's such a big man. As long as he stays in between the pipes, he can stop just about anything. He gets into trouble, though, when he wanders. Now, as unorthodox as his style may be, though, many say it's very reminiscent of uh, another Czech goaltender by the name of Dominic Hasek. And we all know he did pretty well last year. Guys? 
You know, Czech monarch has been playing nine years. Thanks, Chris. Whether it be over in the Czech Republic or here in the NHL, his very first year over there, his goals against was 2.38. Every year since, that's eight straight years, it's been around two. The guy stops the puck. He bottom does that. Uh, bottom line. Five wins, nine losses in the playoffs for Czech Monik coming into this game. Eddie Belfort, of course, has won 81 playoff games, fourth most in NHL history as he got out of the tie with Ken, Ken Dryden in that last win. Dryden now, of course, in charge of Toronto, their GM. Back behind uh, the net, loose. Toronto trying to find one here. That deflected save made on Michael Renberg's chance. Cycling down low, Healy, Renberg, the fourth line out there with Tom Fitzgerald, and uh, creating at least one opportunity. Up the board, Svela trying to hold it in, and he cleared it out of there. This will force Belfour out. Eddie Belfour put the body in, from a little check on uh, Rashier, and then moves back into the net. Smart play by Belfour. He moved the puck, then used his body as a screen. Here's Terrian. Terrian lost control of it. Shot save. A chance to make it a one goal game. What a play by Czech Monik. Hey, honey, I got on that earlier flight out of Boston. Can you still pick me up? Sure, I'll be there. Great, I'll see you in LA. Life's good when you're Kristen Davis. Life's better when you're Kristen Davis and you have the cell phone with a walkie-talkie. Hello! Coast-to-coast -coast walkie-talkie service coming soon, only from Nextel. Hey! That thing got a Hemi, right? Yeah! Well, now I got a Hemi, too! But I got something you don't got! Check this out! Dodge Ram 1500. Hemi legend continues. Hit it! Grab Dodge's 770 powertrain limited warranty. Ford, Chevy, and Toyota don't match it. Hi. Hey, guys. So? So, my girlfriend bought this furniture. Uh-huh. Except there's no instructions. Who needs instructions? Not bad, huh? Another Labatt Blue? Fear me. Nice. Look up, see blue, Labatt Blue. Hey, honey. Look! That's great. But where's the bookcase that I bought? What? What a potentially fateful turn of events for the Leafs. Terrian lost the puck. Chekmanik had to come up big. The Leafs come close to scoring. What ends up happening? McGillney with the penalty. Tried to lift up the stick of Primo, missed it, got Primo in the face. It's a double minor. There's 13.03 to go in the third period. It's 3 1 Philadelphia, and they now have a double minor to work with on a power play. Power play is going to be the third of the game. One for two for Philadelphia so far. Three for 23 in the series. Same check, Monik on a McCabe shot. The face off win. Two shorthanded goals by Toronto in the series. Mogilny and Green have those two. More action tonight. Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern. Ryan Smith, the Oilers, trying to avoid elimination against the Dallas Stars. Stanley Cup playoffs presented by Nextel on ESPN. Faceoff taken back in behind the net. Desjardins. We're at 12.52 to go here in the third period. The Flyers up by two. They've got a double minor to work with in the power play. Ronick stripped of the puck on a poke check, and they cleared the length of the ice by Rick Reichel. You know, one, one of the secondary advantages of a four-minute penalty is the guy who's sitting in the box. He's the most dangerous player for Toronto, even strength or shorthanded. That's McGillney. Desjardins sends that one in, and he go for it. Try to play it around high off the glass. Did, but Amati kicked at it to hold it in. Now it comes back into the middle. Shorthanded, Toronto. McCabe leads with Owen Nolan. Nolan dropped it. McCabe in the middle. Had to come back to get it. They'll change up. Desjardins cleared it around the near side. Toronto changing behind the play. Jeremy Roenick sent it deeper. That's Owen Nolan on the hit. 
Ronick. Well, guys, you got, you're on a penalty kill and you drop the puck. It has to be a good one. If you don't make a good one, you, you trap everybody. You're already shorthanded because you're killing a penalty. Philadelphia trying to get it set up here. They will. Weinrich working a point on the power play. Drops it back around the far side. That's Hansus. Hansus looking for Tony Amati in the middle. Hansus heads to the front of the net. No return pass. Toronto trying to kill off four minutes worth of power play time for the Flyers. Weinrich does not take it. Center. Kapanen tied up from behind. Owen Nolan. Back it comes to Weinrich. Power play. 220 left on it. Ragnarsson's playing the middle on the power play. Danier drops it off. He goes to the front. Near side Kapanen. Weinrich in. Shot. Belfour save. Rebound. Score! The Flyers are slowly but surely loosening up this great penalty killing unit of the Maple Leafs by stretching their power play, moving the puck quickly. They moved all the way around the horn and finally when it went back to Weinrich, he just drifted one on Belfour. Kapanen banked it in off of Belfour. Yeah, he did from behind the goal line. Right off the arm, off the blocker. There was 2.16 to go on the clock as you look at the Southwest goal cam. Off the blocker in the net, 2.16 to go on the double minor so that means a new power play to start for two minutes for the Flyers and build the power play for Philadelphia we watched it all game their defensemen on the blue line for the Flyers are one guy's on one board the other guy's on the other board and they're stretching everybody out they're stretched out so they can control the puck the only way to do it against the penalty killing unit that moves as one everybody can't move at once when you move the puck that far Power play continues, a minute 42 now in the second half of this power play. Kapanen got the goal, the Flyers have a 4-1 lead. Two power play goals today for Philadelphia. Set back deep by Janssen, they've got the fire in front of the net. Desjardins, that one blocked straight up in the air. Dumped into the corner after Healy had made the block and held in by Philadelphia. Back it comes to Janssen. Janssen looking, LeClaire, tip, save made, Belfour, and he looked behind him. He won that. the goal by Kapanen from Weinrich and Hansen. You know that shot. Janssen was on the near boards. Desjardins was on the far boards. Look at he's right up against yep. the boards. Look who's in front. Toronto is also Ooh. taking away the pass down the boards and the pass across the blue line. That is why Janssen made the right decision to get it in front where he knew he had an overload. There were two flyers and only one made believe. Now, Kapanen. Can you imagine 23 games for Carolina. Only one goal in the playoffs last season. This season, four straight games, no goals. Well, he's got two today. His confidence level has to be back. Sammy Kapanen helping out on that power play and a real shooter shot. And he banked that off Eddie Belfour. In front, Hansus. Philadelphia, Kapanen still out there. Left it behind the net. Lume gets squeezed out of the play. Back to the point. Ragnarsson goes the other way with it. And fake the one timer. Kapanen stays in front of the net. He is not your prototypical big player in front physically, but he gets it done. Tried to tip that. Belfort got a piece. Weinrich on the far side holds it in. Kapanen came over to get it. Sent back up. Weinrich holds it in again. Weinrich near side to Ragnarsson. Our play's got 33 left on it. You know, one of the adjustments Ken Hitchcock made in this series, Toronto's PK is so good and so quick. Hitchcock has made sure he's got two fast guys, quick guys, with one big guy out there on every forward unit. Toronto down three with 9.37 left to go in the third. Owen Nolan with Sundin. Sundin to the middle, leaves it for Nolan. Owen Nolan a chance. That gets blocked. Desjardins centered in. Svela fakes. Oh, didn't get through. Shot Cavalier. Two saves, Gary. He got the first one with his right toe and the second one with his catching glove. He knocked the puck down. How he does it, I don't know. He's a big, tall, lanky guy, is Chetsmonic, the goaltender, and he went flying out. <laughs> I mean, he's but not a, he's aggressive. Watch this toe save. How, right toe. How wow. is it, how isn't the issue, is it? Now look at this. Left hand. And then Ragnarsson takes the penalty, used a stick to knock the man down in front. He had four guys Chetmonic did behind him playing street hockey making saves two there and then another flyer joined them matt sundin got taken down hard matt you saw cabrillet try and wait he tried to yeah. find some room somewhere Did you see the cross check ragnarsson on oh, this look at this that's from that shot by owen nolan went off his leg 
That was a, and, and you know what? Desjardins was stunned as he was down on the ice. Then he jumped back up to get into the play. But you can see that Nolan slap shot hurt him. And he is the Flyers' top D man, and he is in great pain as he's walking to the room with the help of two people. Ooh, boy, the Leafs have four seconds left on their penalty, so we're four on four. And then it'll be a power play for Toronto. Face off one by Sundin. Power play is now underway. McGillney comes out of the box after the double minor serve. He'll stay on the power play, obviously. There he is. McGillney sends it around for Owen Nolan. They keep this line together on the power play. Nolan's pass gets blocked, and Reinrich cleared it out of there. Oh, we've had goals two by Kapanen, Yaskevich, and Gagne. The four for Philadelphia. Aki Bird, a long time ago for Toronto, was the first goal of the game. And the only time Toronto has led, short handed Primo. Primo into the corner. Centering pass. Capital is charging up the near side. Almost got there. Sundin cleared it out. Here's McGillney. Caberlet heading to the net. Caberlet the tip wide. Oh, and Nolan. Nolan turned to the middle, got knocked down. The puck ends up going over the glass. Faceoff stays in the zone. That's Owen Nolan. Next Saturday, golf greats Arnold Palmer, Hell Irwin, and Doug Toole. They'll head the field at the Liberty Mutual Legends of Golf. Coverage begins next Saturday at 1 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ABC. Well, it looks like the Flyers have lost to Jardin after blocking a shot, and, and uh, the Flyers needed some help and got Eric Weinrich, a left defenseman, to move over and play the right side for a shift, Bill. Get a good job with Terrian. Power play now with a minute nine left on it for Toronto. They are three for 18 so far in the series. They have not converted today on three previous chances on the advantage. Up to the point. McCabe stepped up to hold it in. Dumped it off the half wall. Aggressive penalty killing by the Flyers. Clear McCabe. Why some great reads by Eric Weinrich. I said Eric Desjardins is the Flyers number one D man and he is but Eric Weinrich has played like a number one defenseman in this series. 15th season for Weinrich in the National Hockey League. In the corner, it's uh, Renberg. Lost it. And uh, that goes on the bench. The faceoff is going to come to center. Again, Weinrich, who's been playing most of this game with Yancey. He's a left defenseman, left handed shot. He's been able to adjust because of his experience, move to the right side. What and a, uh, what a just getting it done. What a terrific job he does off the ice with his wife Tracy. They run a charity celebrity golf tournament in Portland, Maine, every every off season to benefit Alzheimer's research. And they just work tirelessly towards that cause. Against Sundin, Hansu, Sundin won it. Got it to McGillney. Power play's got 30 left on it. Played again by Weinrich, up and out. This series goes back to Toronto. ESPN or ESPN 2 will have the game that'll be on Monday night and right now it looks like it'll be a do or see you later game for the Toronto Maple Leafs as they are down 4 1 to the Flyers short handed ripped wide of the net and the power play is going to end without another chance on it no shots on that power play for Toronto. Ryder had a lot of shifts two on the right side this one on the left side. Here's Roberts. Roberts sends it around the far side with Justin Williams. Williams moving it into the middle. Gagne trying to tip it out. That did not come outside the zone. Toronto's still on side here. Philadelphia. Williams has it though. Came backwards to the line. Tucker got him. Gets up and he's all right. Watch out for Darcy Tucker now. Time running out on Toronto. You're watching the National Hockey League and ABC Sports Championship Television. Okay. I'll take Chris's buddy. You play that? Why not? Look up, see blue, Levant Blue. Michelin designed the cross-terrain SUV tires specifically for SUVs to help provide responsive handling and a smooth ride. You'd be surprised just how smooth. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Hey, Don! Hey, what's up? You going to Tommy's party? I can't, I'm working. Oh, break, break. The Dodge SXTs, four cool cars, and you won't have to work two jobs just to buy one. Done, you made it! 
like your hat. Grab Dodge's 770 powertrain limited warranty. Ford, Chevy, and Toyota don't match it. This is Labatt Blue, the clean, crisp lager imported daily from Canada. Its refreshing, honest taste comes from a... Oh, Sorry! God. My bad, my bad. I got carried away a little. Uh, we're going to need another blue over here. This one's spilled. Can we get another blue, please? Cold, like this one. Battle scars begin to mount. Pete Primo, we are told, took four stitches for that cut that was open from the gilding stick. You hardly missed a ship. Whoever did the work, get it in a hurry. Quick stitching is a good thing. Well, they have a sewing machine in there. Singer strikes again. Remember, it's a series, so the tough guys for the Leafs. Wouldn't mind taking a few body checks here as time winds down. Keep an eye on Domi, Tucker, Rashier. If they're out there, we'll probably be out there for Philadelphia. 6.38 remaining here, third period. Flyers with a 4-1 lead. Janssen picks it up. The other thing, Gary, is that we might even see Pat Quinn rest his key people here because if the Leafs force a seventh game, it will happen Tuesday night. Here, game six is Monday night in Toronto. They do not have the day off if it needs to go seven. In order for that to happen, of course, if Toronto loses this, they'll have to win that game Monday night on their home ice. Owen Nolan sends it in. Terry came back to get it, dumped it far side for Janssen. Terry took the hit on the near side from Tucker after he made that pass. Back comes Hansus with LeClaire. LeClaire in front. The tip just wide. They muscled that one on because he was being uh, held from behind. Uh, LeClaire was by Camberlay as he made the effort. Recky in the corner. Back for Recky from Hansus. Recky, wraparound shot. Belfour, the save. 5.43 remaining. Flyers with a chance to go up 3-2 in the series. See you next week. See you, Bill. Good job, man. Rusty, what's your hurry? Hey, I'm just trying to get home. Califragilistic, <laughs> 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 help me drop ballistic. Introducing the Dodge SRT series. Race inspired, street legal. Sweet. Hello? Hey, how you doing? Do you want to grab some dinner? Oh, it's you. You don't call for ages, and I'm just supposed to say, hi, great, dinner, fine. No, yeah, but, but I... But nothing. Could you hibernate or something? Whoa. Oh. Hey, go around. Shh. Yeah. Look up, see blue. Look back, blue. You must be so hungry. Oh, yeah. Toenails, anyone? <laughs> watch, watch your fingernails. Little skate repair. They're stoning the skate blade. Must have been a burr on it from Eddie Belfort. See the post? Yeah. His skate blade went against the post. It was his right skate that he was having. Actually shined up, polished up. Stoning the skate blade. Could that be part of the trilogy? In the corner, puck loose, Toronto. Now you gotta just hope if you're the Maple Leafs. You send everybody in. Hope you can get something without giving up any more with 526 to go and down by three goals in this game. And Chuck Monarch has made 20 consecutive saves. The Leafs scored on their very first shot of the game. And he's been dead on except for a couple of goal posts since. Ronald Brashier is out there, sends it in. Belfort came out to play it. Up for Renberg. Turn pass deflected away. Now a matter for Philadelphia of running this clock down and heading up to Toronto. Off the blocker of Eddie Belfort to the near side. It's the officials now who are hoping this clock just keeps running and things stay under control. You've got Domi out there. And that'll be whistled on the offside and we'll check in with Chris again. Chris Simpson. 
Well, Gary, Eric Desjardins just walked by us. Actually, more descriptively, he just hopped by us, not putting any weight at all on that right leg. It is his right foot, the inside of the right foot, that took the bulk of that hit. He's been taken down the hallway. They're going to uh, do x-rays, and we'll see uh, what that shows. But clearly, he is a man in pain right now, Gary. All right, and they certainly do not want to lose that defenseman, Eric Desjardins. Hurt as he blocked that shot. Back into the zone taken by Reichel. Clears it around the near side. Hit put on Spela by Kapanen. He's got two goals in the game. Chance to pick up a playoff hat trick in the final 430 of this third period. That one bounces over Terry and Stick by Domi. Terry and avoided it. Domi and he stay together. Jeremy Roenick. Up to fire for Weinrich. Weinrich has got Amati cutting. Tony Amati in. Eddie Belfort. Reaching out, blocker side. Boy, that, that might have just been a gravy goal for the Flyers, but it would have been a big one for Tony Amati. He has not scored a playoff goal in six years. All, all trouble, trouble at the Flyers bench. During the change, as they started, Tony, uh, Ty Domi, rather, was over there right in front of the Philadelphia bench. There was one big heavyweight scrap but earlier in this series. Domi and Brashear got after each other. And it was Major League. Here you see Domi being ushered to the penalty box, as is Keith Primo. Primo was still poking at Domi even when he was standing on the bench. There's the hit on Ronick. And Ke oh, all Keith oh, Primo yeah, reached man. off the bench. Uh, that's, I mean, you could see Domi wanted to give Ronick a shot, did up high, but you can't do that. You can't do that from the bench. That may be one of the few times Ty Domi didn't start it. Didn't want any. That's, had no intention you, of starting. You it. say that, but he is a smart. I think yeah. he's one of the smartest guys that understands his job. He knew that he had hit Ronick up high, and I think he might have even stopped exactly where he did, just to see what he could get coming off the bench. Honestly, he's yeah. that smart. You, you know, you can't do that stuff. I mean, you see, Primo has been given a penalty, and that's a good call by the official. Sure is. But I'm glad it didn't go any further. You start doing stuff from the bench, the league starts to take a look at it, and you miss games. So Primo goes to the penalty box. Each get two minutes. Ty Domi's uh, gone as well. So we skate four on four with four minutes left to go in the period. McKay moves it up. Sunday swung around as he sent it into the zone trying to hit McGillney. Still along the boards that came outside the zone and will be whistled offside. Tomorrow, Shaq, Kobe, the Lakers begin their quest for a fourth straight championship. It'll be against Kevin Garnett and the Timberwolves. Western Conference Playoff Series tomorrow live at 3 Eastern. ABC Sports Championship Television. Question for you, Bill. If Desjardins injury is serious and he can't play game six, who do they play? I think Vandermeer, Ken, Seidenberg, or Slaney? I think uh, Ken Hitchcock really likes Jimmy Vandermeer and believes he can be a, a big player in this league at some point. He's still young, but he likes him defensively. And you got to be good defensively to play for Ken Hitchcock. I think it would be Jimmy Vandermeer. That will be decided, of course, uh, tomorrow and again, depending on the extent of the injury on Monday. The other thing is Desjardins, who played a lot with Terry and has played a lot of Matt Sundin in this series. Sent into the corner, check Monica out to get it before Sundin could get there. Jeremy Roenick drops it back for Janssen. Janssen and Weinrich teamed up defensively. 3-13 left, third period. The Philadelphia Flyers leading it four to one. Into the corner, Roenick coming back to get it. Mackey Berg put the hit on. Berg cleared it up to the point. Flyers were changing. They'll take it back at center. Berg, the first goal of the game in the first period, and the only one for Toronto. Cabot and Janssen and Amani. The escape of Roenick and Amani. Gagne from Williams, then Captain and again from Weinrich and Hansel is the four flyer goal. Hey Bill, I think you were right. We haven't seen Mogilny or Sundin for quite some time. I think they're being rested thinking about the next game. All right, Brecky will move it in. Brecky leaves it near side. Hansus moved it to the corner to Recky, who came over to help out. All right, Brecky. Trouble getting that puck to sit for him up against the near side wall. Cleared back through center. Green. No crisscross. Drop pass for Owen Nolan near side. Nolan in the collision with Yuskevich. Yuskevich takes another hit and did pretty well with it against Green. And it's cleared again. Owen Nolan earlier in the series 
And a problem with a hip flexor, a muscle in the leg. And I wonder if it's still bothering him. Well, it looks like it is. Yeah, he's not, he doesn't have that real push with his legs, does he, with his skating stride? No, I mean, all Nolan's big thing is his power. Just yeah. his, his power as a, as a player, and he just doesn't seem to have that. He's not made uh, much room in front of the net in this series. Save made by Chekmanik on Hoagland's shot. In the first period, Nolan made some passes from behind the net for scoring chances on Chekmanik, but we had not seen him drive to the net with a puck at all in this game. He will take the brunt of it tomorrow again uh, in Toronto as far as the press is concerned. They won all 10 series in a team history where they've come away winning game five when it's been tied 2 2. Guess who's out again? Guess who's out there? 28 87. Oh, here they go. Here we go. go. Ty Domi, Bryce oh, turns around and hits him, and Domi, Domi doesn't want to go. Domi he just held it away. Bryce here turned around and punched him. And Domi skated away. The Leafs put Domi on the ice. Ken Hitchcock responded, put it, putting Brashear sure. out there, and the fans all stood, started to cheer, hoping that maybe, just maybe, they get after each other. And believe me, the scrap they had, and you guys were here, right, earlier yep. in the series, that was something else. Domi's after the entire flyer bench. You got to pick your spots, and Domi is. Yeah. His team is down four to one. If he happens to fight Donald Brashear here, it's not going to result in a win here. They're not going to win anyway. If he happens to lose, then it just gives the Flyers bench that yeah. that much more momentum going up to Toronto in Game Six. Ty's been around the block a few oh, times. Oh, you bet, it? you bet. And uh, uh, you know, and, and Donald Brashear was doing what he does best too: try to pick yeah. his spot at his time. Check Monick in the corner. Renberg moving up, gets back into the net. Ty Domi still out there. Just put that hit on in the corner. Eddie Belfour has got to play it at the other end. Minute 29 left to go, third period. Belfour is going to stay in net here with a three goal differential. Domi on the centering pass. Terrian blocked it. Near side. Domi is shot. That one gets blocked off Terrian. Capitan. Capitan played it off the boards. Too far ahead. McCabe uh, coming back. Belfour doesn't want to stop the clock here with a minute nine to go. And a power play anyway. Underway for the Leafs. This really tells about the big guys for the Leafs getting rested. And a shot save made. Check Monik on McCabe. Domi. 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 Domi waved at the goaltender's glove after he caught the puck and got cleared out. He's gone. Domi's gone on this one, at least for a deuce. Sundin and Mogilny are power play guys. Ooh. They're not playing right now. Hey, we ain't done here yet. Oh, they're going after Gagne. Gagne's in the middle of that, Brian. Now Brian McCabe is trying to trying to uh, come forward with a take uh, no prisoners attitude. Yeah, he's swatting anybody that's around him, see? Anybody. McCabe got Hansus in the face while he was still putting a shot at another flyer to his left. I, I got to tell you something. There's been such a role reversal in these two franchises over the last decade. Yeah. This used to be the Flyers M.O. on every situation when they were losing at the end of the game. Toronto has uh, really got a team that's got a reputation of being a bunch of bad boys more than the Flyers do now. <laughs> Other than fresh yeah. year. They yeah, really I remember do. those days when you played for the Flyers, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up a lot of gloves, J.D. Here's how it started. What? A Domi with a big cuff on the side of Yuskevich's face. Then he got up and started throwing him again. Former teammates with the Leafs. Donald Brashear hasn't sat down since he went to the box. After that Domi incident, he's been standing up in there since. He has not sat down. There's still 101 to go in the third period. That's why we mentioned earlier that this is a series, not just a game. And everybody tries to get their licks in one way or the other when games expire. And getting lost in all this is this man, Chuck Monich. Has, he's played pretty darn well, hasn't he? He has. I said before the game that uh, Roman Chuck Monich simply had to stop the stoppable shots. The goal he let in might have been stoppable, but he certainly stopped a lot of shots that were uh, better than simply stoppable shots. Eddie Belfort at the other end. Could you say that Eddie Belfort was bad on any of the goals? No, I think the Flyers did their best job in the series of getting people yeah. in right spots for rebound screening and deflecting oh, them away. Yeah. There were some shots he had no idea the shots were coming because of traffic in front. And this man may have had his coming out party as far as goal scoring goes in the Stanley Cup playoffs, getting the two goals. Tony Amanti not scoring goals yet, and Owen Nolan not scoring goals yet. Yaskevich and Gagne each have a goal. Lamonti a couple of assists. Berg the only goal for Toronto. Domi gets four for roughing. McCabe two for roughing. Gagne two for roughing. All that said and done, you got a four on four here with a minute one left to go. 
And the Philadelphia Flyers is trying to run this thing down now. With under a minute left. And they'll head back with a chance to wrap it up in Toronto Monday night. A game that'll be either on ESPN or ESPN2 on Monday. Flyers already have a three goal win in this series. Game two is a four to one victory. That also was here. The last two games have been decided by just one goal. Toronto had a five three win in game one. And the fans on their feet here at the first union center. Green put the check on. Philadelphia's in no rush to do anything but watch the clock tick down. The celebration early. And that's going to do it. Flyers four, Leafs one. First 10 minutes of this game belonged to Toronto. The Leafs had scoring chances, couldn't finish. A little pushing at Travis Green. And it looks like the point for the Flyers. A little parting, a few parting words here. But you know, the when, when Tucker was given the penalty and the Flyers scored on the power play, the Flyers took over the game. A couple of goal posts by the Leafs, but the Flyers played well in every aspect of the game after the 10-minute mark. And I think the Flyers looked more like themselves than at any other time in this series, coming out in the third period and doing a real good job of shutting down Toronto when they had to. Shots ended up 29-23 in this game. Philadelphia with the advantage there and on the board. Our studios, John and Barry, coming up after this. Yellow pencils, yellow post-it notes, yellow boxers, yellow boxers. Fourteen dollars. Land career, air career, pedicure, re One hundred thirty-seven dollars. Two printers, two scanners, two tutus. Five hundred forty dollars. Keeping business expenses separate from personal expenses, priceless. Letterhead, cinnamon bread, envelope. Cancel. There are some things money can't buy. For everything business, there's Mastercard, business card. At a giant store that sells anything, you might find yourself a lawn tractor. But you'll also find Timmy. Awesome! At your neighborhood dealer, you'll get a friendly face, expert advice, great service, and the outstanding performance of Simplicity and Snapper products. Powered by Briggs & Stratton engines. So visit your neighborhood dealer and prepare to be impressed. Awesome. Well, another great day, Stanley Cup action right here on ABC, presented by Nextel. Toronto and Philadelphia, that series now three games to two. Philadelphia gets the win there, and Toronto looked like they really just ran out of gas. I, I think they are running out of gas. I think the size of the Philadelphia Flyers, the people that they can throw at the Toronto Maple Leafs, Toronto Maple Leafs can't match that, and it's paying a price, and Belfour looked tired today. And you see early on Darcy Tucker and Jeremy Roenick going at each other, and then a nice play by Tucker. Tucker gets a little revenge there. Very intense series. There's a lot of uh, inner battles going on. Oh, and Nolan there showing excitement. Big goal for Toronto. Aki Berg got that goal. And then Amante doing a nice job on the forecheck. It goes back to Janssen at the point. Good wrist shot. Game's tied at one. Eddie didn't even get in the butterfly there. He never had a chance to see that puck. Didn't know where it was coming from. And then the turnover right there. Jeremy Runick finds Dimitri Uskevich. And it looked like Eddie Belfort never saw that one either. Toronto was terrible in their own end tonight for really the first game. Watch right here. This is a typical. Puck's laying there. Primo comes through. Everyone's whacking at it. No one wins a physical battle in front of Eddie Belfort. Gagne gets an easy goal. Not even touched. And then Weinrich with the shot. It goes to the side. Sammy Kappen and banks it in off Eddie Belfort. Four to one at that point. And again, you can see nobody anywhere near Kappen. And that's just a little bit too easy to happen. And then crashing the net for the Leafs. And Czech Monarch just seemed to get his body in front of the shots. Big body. Towards the end of the period. Again, he just throws the leg out, well, comes up with a save. Watch right here. Caverly has a wide open net. It hits uh, Czech Monarch right in the glove. They hit two posts early in this game, which was the turning point. Right here, Domi and Brashear, they know each other very well. Remember that great scrap they had earlier in the series? It looked like they were going to do it again. Brashear certainly was available. Domi says, wait another day, pal. I'll be back. Yeah, he skated off, and Brashear cut a penalty on that one, and then things started to fall apart even more the end of the game so the Flyers right now have a three games of two lead after winning four to one let's return now to Philadelphia and join Chris Simpson thanks very much well Sammy Kapanen's two goals led the way in the 4-1 win over the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs today Sammy great game how did it feel goals are pretty good right now uh, 
know, uh, all, all the games they've been uh, tight and uh, tough battles, and uh, we just uh, seems like uh, gaining some uh, momentum, and uh, we just want to keep going and work hard. And uh, the game plan is uh, kind of simple: taking all the shots and going, and then uh, we, we're getting those breaks right now. Now there were two power play goals, and uh, I, I know that was something you were working on in practice. Uh, the power play had not been that effective so far. Uh, it, has it found its way finally? Well, I think the whole year uh, the power play uh, numbers haven't been uh, that good, and uh, we've been working on it. And uh, you know, uh, every once in a while you get breaks, and uh, in the first goal I uh, got my uh, stick on the, the half point there, there, and uh, the second one had a tough angle and uh, got a good, good break, uh, hitting the goal uh, on the blocker and uh, went in. But you know. Uh, we take any kind, of goal, any kind of goals right now. Last year with the Carolina Hurricanes, you went all the way to the finals, but in that entire series, that entire playoffs, you had scored one goal. You doubled your output, your playoff output today in this one game. Uh, satisfying? Oh, well, uh, it's been uh, pretty much a 12 months uh, uh, kind of tough, uh, tough hockey for myself personally. I haven't scored that many goals and last year in the playoffs. Uh, it was kind of carrying over uh, throughout the season this year and uh, finally got a couple goals tonight. And, uh, you know, like I say, it was a big win for us, and uh, hopefully uh, it's a good start for myself uh, personally. Now you take the series back to Toronto for Game 6. It's not going to be easy in the Air Canada Centre, is it? Well, it's not going to be easy. I don't think any of these games uh, has been easy. And uh, we uh, we were talking about it in the start of the series. It's going to be a long series. And uh, uh, both teams, they're playing a physical game. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's just a lot of shots taken and uh, tough battles in the front. And then uh, we... we uh, so far, I've been uh, taking uh, some uh, advantage in the front, front of the net there, and uh, we just got to keep doing the same things and uh, try to get the fourth win. Well, Sammy, I'll let you go and join uh, the team in celebration in the dressing room. Thanks for this, and congratulations. Thank you. Sammy Kapanen with two goals today in a Philadelphia 4-1 win. Now it goes back to Toronto for Game 6 on Monday. Now it's back to John and Barry. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. You heard them talk about it during the interview. Last year with the Carolina Hurricanes, Sammy Kapanen absolutely disappeared. What did Philadelphia see that they brought him over late in the season? Uh, two things, I think. Number one is skating ability. He's a great skater, okay? Number two is he's a good defensive player. The Finns are all very schooled defensively, very well coached defensively. So Ken Hitchcock can play this guy in a lot of situations. He plays a power play a little bit. Uh, he kills penalties a little bit with the skating ability and defensive strength. And he can also match up against the other team's offensive lines. Uh, with the skating ability, he can play against Mogil. Only. Very few players are able to do that. So uh, he was a role player brought over, and if he kicks in some goals for Philly, it's yeah. a bonus. Big bonus with two goals today. Now, for the Toronto Maple Leafs and their fans, they can take heart and go back to last year because when they face elimination, this team really digs into the trench and hangs in there. This was last year alone, 4-1. and one. The lone loss was to Carolina. They are that type of team. they got a lot of character. they got a lot of courage. Uh, Mo Gilney certainly wasn't 100% today. Uh, Sundin wasn't at his best. But again, early in the game, they hit two posts. Tucker hit one. And then you saw Mo Gilney hit one with a two-on-one -on -one with uh, Sundin. That could have been a different story. Again, Nolan was non-existent offensively. That's got to change. He's got to kick in a goal for this team somehow. they got to get that guy around the front of the net so he can use his shot. And with the heart of Owen Nolan, you don't question that. You you figure no, something's got to be wrong, I think right? he's hurt. I think this guy's hurt because the way he's playing, not the physical presence, not the big shot, I think he's hurt. Yeah, he'd be the guy to have yeah. in this series. Now, you talk about those elimination games. On the other side of the coin, Colorado is 10-13 the last five years when having a chance to eliminate an opponent. And again, the situation against the Wild today. Win, and they march on. Willie Mitchell comes back to him. Patrick Waugh whiffed. Well, they lost this game in the first period because they were not ready to play for some reason. Again, I think a little bit of it, they were talking about the Detroit loss and the fact they don't have to play Detroit in the second round. I think they're looking ahead of their opponent, and that's a cardinal sin in hockey. And then this one, you said everybody's out of position. Everybody's out of position, including Patrick. He was way over by the dot. He almost made the save coming across. That is not the Avalanche style of hockey. Kuba gets that goal. Peter Forsberg with a shot. Manny Fernandez comes out with a big save. Fernandez played great today. Well, the better the team played defensively, they didn't have many breakdowns, but Manny was sure aggressive. He was challenging. He was square to the shooter. Very confident goaltender right now. Again, when Minnesota scores the first goal, John, they're the best team in the NHL. And then again, Patrick Waugh just did not seem to get himself square on a shot. And he had another goal to make it 3 nothing. And a turnover, uncharacteristic turnover in the neutral zone by the Avalanche. Patrick did not back the D up. Pascal Dupuis came up with it. But then late in the game, suddenly Colorado realizes the game has started. And Blake goes with a backhand and somehow finds his way between eight players and into the goal. But they could not get another one. Three to two is the final. The Wild force another game in game six, which will be back home. Right now, let's take you out to Steve and Darren in Denver. 
Thanks very much. Uh, here in Denver, it has to be considered a shocking victory by the Wild to keep this series alive and bring it back to St. Paul for game number six. And always a surprise, the starting goaltender for Minnesota. It was Manny Fernandez. He picks up his first ever career victory. And Manny joins us now from just outside that Wild dressing room. When did you find out officially? We know you couldn't tell anybody, but when did you find out? And what was it like experiencing your first playoff win? Well, I, I found out uh, two days before, uh, right after we uh, we finished the game. Uh, I talked with my goalie coach, and he uh, he told me to be ready. That uh, he thought he was gonna, I was going to be the one starting, and and that's what happened uh, yesterday. They told me I was going to start, but uh, I never uh, lost a focus over those two days. And uh, you know, coming in here, there's uh, it's like I mean, you've played a lot of games in in uh, in the season, but uh, it's never like a playoff game, and uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know too much how to get ready for that one but uh i was pretty happy with the with my start well you used all the smelling salts that's how you get ready manny <laughs> I was just uh just in case i fell asleep out there <laughs> i don't imagine that was going to happen we're going to nope. we're going to put you through some of the brilliant saves that you made and i know that they're a team with obviously extensive uh, ability when their first six forwards especially uh, we'll roll the saves and maybe you can just explain some of the action in front of you manny well they're uh, they're definitely coming at me too all, all night uh, they didn't have a lot of shots, but uh, you know when they uh, when they did, they really uh, they really tried hard to get it in there. Um, you know, just, uh, anytime that Fosberg, Fosberg, uh, they started playing Fosberg, Sakic, and they do together. Is I mean, uh, the puck is moving fast, and you better be ready. Manny, what will you be able to take out of this win as a team and use to your benefit at home that you weren't able to do in games three and four? Uh, I don't know. We we definitely wanted to go back home and and win one for our fans, and when we left uh, Minnesota, that's exactly what I said. You know, if we have a chance to come back and at least give them a good show, mm -hmm. and try to win a game, it's that's all we want. You know, and then we'll focus. You know, if it if it goes the distance, we'll focus. But right now, we're focusing. The guys are taking it uh, small sections and just uh, focusing on one period, one shift, and one game. Have you been told you're starting game six? <laughs> no, but I'll. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, imagining that he's going to give me the start. So, yeah, you know, I got nothing to lose, so I'd like to play like that. We'll see you in St. Paul on Monday. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Manny Fernandez, his first ever career Stanley Cup playoff victory. Guys, back to you. Yeah, Steve and Darren, and not a bad one to start off, staving off elimination. In game fives at home since 2001 for the Avalanche, things have just not gone the way you would expect them to. The last two years, of course, Los Angeles is the one that knocked them off and forcing the game sevens. What is it about this team? Because you saw clearly in the final three, four minutes of that game, the talent of the Avalanche came out. Where was that team the rest of the game? We've talked about this before. This is the difference between hockey and other sports. The skilled teams in the NHL still have to work as hard as the lesser skilled teams. The, uh, the passion, the character, the courage of the lesser team, if they're willing to work, overcomes a talented team if they're not willing to work. Today, Colorado tried to win without working. That does not happen in the NHL. Now in the third period, when their backs were against the wall, then you saw the Colorado Avalanche team emerge. They attacked. They won the physical battles. They dumped it in. They had two men in a loose puck. They worked as hard as Minnesota. Then the talented players excelled. If this happens in game six and, and the Avalanche aren't ready to play, the result will be exactly the same. Let me ask you a question. As a coach, you're Tony Granato now. You want to look at the tape, and you know exactly what went wrong. Which part do you emphasize? The 27 minutes or so where you were terrible or the rest of the game when you played very well? I'm a big believer that it's a lot better showing a guy do something right once than show him doing something wrong 10 times. So I would concentrate in the last 12 minutes of the game and show them attack and show them aggressive, show them winning the battle, show them winning draws, show them finishing their checks, show Patrick making saves. That's what I would show tomorrow and the next day. Now 10 and 14, the Avalanche, in the last five years with a chance to eliminate an opponent 10 and 14. Well, we with talked about uh, against uh, New Jersey when they yep. did it uh, with uh, Raymond Bork on that's the team. That's exactly right. They win, game five, they win game six and game seven. Unbelievable. Win game six on the road yep. in that one too. Toronto and Philadelphia once again to show you this final. Four to one. Gagne had a goal. Yuskevich had a goal. And Sammy Kapanen had two goals in this one. Jeremy Roenick played extremely well. And he's with Chris Simpson. Thanks, guys. Well, Jeremy Roenick, it didn't exactly start off uh, that well for the Flyers. The first 10 minutes of the first period, it didn't look necessarily like you'd take this one, but it ended up in a 4-1 win. Well, uh, you know, I don't know if we started slow. They came out and really played physical, and 
the first shot on net happened to go in and went in the middle of the net. So it was a little unfortunate, but uh, we stayed poised. We stayed confident being in our building. We knew that our fans were going to be a good boost for us, and we stayed right with it, and our power play got two goals, and everybody's been criticizing our power play and won us hockey game today. What do you think was the difference? I mean, was the power play something you'd been working on? Well, we've been talking about it a lot, and everybody else has been talking about it. But I think, for one thing, we, uh, we, we just stayed focused. We stayed poised in our game plan. We didn't uh, get out of it. They were trying to run around and, and get a little physical. And we were just staying right with, uh, with what Hitch is telling us to, to do all, uh, all playoffs. And that's just stay smart, play good defensively, and capitalize on our chances. Speaking of your coach, Ken Hitchcock, I mean, no one has to remind you of your early exit from the playoffs last year, the fact that you scored only two goals. This year really seems to be a different team. How much of that can you attribute to Ken Hitchcock? Well, I think a lot of it, he's brought a real win, winning attitude to our club. He's, uh, it's a no-nonsense attitude. He makes everybody responsible for what they're doing out there. He, he demands hard work no matter uh, what, what situation the game is. And, you know, he really uh, stays on us. He doesn't give us any leeway. And, and as, a, as a team, we've accepted it very well. And, and that's very important when all 20, 25 guys accept the roles and accept the system and we all work hard towards it. And uh, Ken's make sure that we've done that. Now, we saw the emotions spill over a bit at the end of the game. What can we expect in Game 6 in Toronto? Well, they're, they're scratching for their lives now. And they're going uh, to come out really hard. They're going to come out banging. And uh, this is a very proud team that we're playing. They're not going to go away without a fight. So we have a, we have a tough game in our hands up there on Monday. Well, we won't want to miss it, Jeremy. Thanks yeah. for this and good luck on Monday. Thanks a lot. Jeremy yes. Roenick talking about what he expects in the next game. And again, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, from about the midway point of the first period, you did not see a lot of reason to believe they could extend this series. But you got to believe with the guys on the team and the character, that could change. But Philadelphia's got to come out in the first period and establish the same physical game that they had all series long. Not let Toronto off the hook. Not let Toronto get the first goal the way they did tonight. And really pound them and let us know it's going to be another hard game. Make Sundin pay a price. Make Mulgillney, who's certainly not 100%, pay a price continue to go after Nolan, uh, players like that, and the talent of the, of the Philadelphia Flyers, which is very, very immense. We look at that lineup, Gagne, Roenick, Primo, uh, Amonti, who has been non-existent, Recchi, uh, who didn't have a great game today. They just got so much talent, but they got to, again, outwork the Toronto Maple Leafs to win. And for the Maple Leafs, they can look at the tape and say, you know, we hit a couple of posts. Exactly. That's what they'll be selling Those to Those things yep. go in. It's an entirely different hockey game. I want to remind you, coming up next today, we're back again at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Check local listings for the game in your area. It will be round number two. Back with more in a moment. Custom crepe for Stanley Cup, $2,700. 30 pairs of white gloves, size large, $360. Silver polish, $9. Spending every waking moment with hockey's holy grail, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard, official card of the NHL and lifelong fan of Phil Pritchard, keeper of Lord Stanley's Cup. Maybe I, I don't own a fancy building or a big shipping department yet. But Brown still takes my business seriously. I can print labels, track shipments, order a pickup right from here. And with the time I save, I can build my business. Maybe I'm not exactly part of the limousine set. But I have a driver. Small business shipping. Synchronized. UPS. What can Brown do for you? Hey, honey, I got on that earlier flight out of Boston. Can you still pick me up? Sure, I'll be there. Great, I'll see you in L.A. Life's good when you're Kristen Davis. Life's better when you're Kristen Davis and you have the cell phone with a walkie-talkie. Hello? Coast-to-coast -coast walkie-talkie service coming soon, only from Nextel. Who knows what tomorrow brings? When it's real, I keep it alive. The road is long. The Stanley Cup playoffs here on ABC presented by Nextel with ABC Sports Championship Television including the NBA Championship and the NBA playoffs getting underway today on ESPN. Jason Kidd, Kenyon Martin and the New Jersey Nets 
ready to get things going. Law pass to Kenny Martin. He gets the dunk. They were up by nine. Gary Payton just had a horrendous day shooting the ball. Actually had double-digit assists, but missed just about everything. And you know what that means. Jason Kidd gets him out and running. Well, Kidd gives it to Kittles. He must have a good class. He's been hurt all year long. I can't wait till Lou Lamorello does Kidd's contract. That'll be hilarious. <laughs> you make how much? <laughs> you do what? Kenyon Martin then jams that one down. You can see at that point a 31-point lead. And the New Jersey Nets, defending Eastern Conference champions, get the victory over the Bucks. 109 to 96 was the final there. The second game on ESPN, Boston Celtics in the Indiana Pacers. 32 seconds left. The Pacers have a one-point lead. They actually led by double digits in the fourth quarter. Jermaine O'Neal having another great game, 24 points. And we're on our test as well with 26. Paul Pierce, 33 points for the Celtics. Tomorrow. The NBA on ABC, and it's the Lakers, the number five seed in the West against the Timberwolves, the number four seed. Barry, you like the Lakers to repeat this year? Yeah, they got Shaq. But <laughs> that is the one difference. <laughs> They're the only team that can say we have Shaq. They have every other piece of the puzzle except for Shaquille O'Neal. That's tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. Let's look ahead to the Oilers and the Stars, a game you'll see tonight on ESPN. Chance for Dallas to close this series out right now. And again, Edmonton, for whatever reason, does not fear this team. They don't fear them, but they're not getting enough production out of their offensive players, I think, to make this series go longer. Comrie's got one goal last game. It was late in the game. He's got to be a bigger factor. And things are happening too easy for the Dallas Stars. Look at those goals. They're going side to side. Uh, that shouldn't happen. No goalie can make saves going side to side. Salo had a chink in his arm and gave up some bad rebounds in that game. But uh, the Edmonton Oilers, if Smith doesn't score, if uh, Comrie doesn't score, and if York don't score, George LaRock can't score every game for the Edmonton Oilers. He's doing his job being a physical presence, John. Yeah, he's a little chop to the back of Marty Turco's leg. Line call, borderline. Didn't even get a penalty on the play. Marty went down, though. And at this point, the Dallas Stars, I got to figure, like, it's psychological. There's so much goes on in the mind of an athlete that if you're in the West right now and Detroit just got knocked yeah. out and they're the defending cup champions, you're all of a sudden saying that door got much wider to get through. Definitely. And I talked about I think Colorado was doing. I think Colorado said, oh, man, we don't have to play Detroit in the second round now. What a break that is for us. And they weren't prepared to play Colorado or they weren't prepared to pay Minnesota. And I think it paid a, they paid a big price today. And the same thing with Dallas. Now, Dallas is thinking, well, what does that mean to us? Uh, St. Louis is thinking, what does that mean to us? And they're not focusing on the team they got to play. St. Louis was not very good last night against Vancouver. And, but I think Dallas, with the veterans and the way they played in Game 5, I think they'll be ready to play Game 6 tonight. Let's talk a little Detroit Red Wings, and we should also talk about the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, and congratulations on the Ooh, way they moved great. on. John Sebastian Jaguer was the big difference. He was, matter of fact, the X factor, Y factor, Z factor, whatever you want to call him. They could not solve this guy there. He couldn't solve him, and, and I don't think he could be solved. I think he was just in one of those zones where it didn't matter what the Detroit Red Wings do. If they go to the net, he would get in that butterfly, take the bottom of the net away. Long shots. He had great vision. Uh, the defense did a great job picking men up in front. If there was a rebound, the guy was tied up. They did not get the second chance opportunities on him. But look at those numbers. Unbelievable numbers for Jaguar. The best save percentage of any goaltender when eliminating a defending Stanley Cup champion. First time in over 50 years the defending champ has been swept out of the playoffs. And as you look ahead with this team, the way they played, they stuck to their game plan. They had a great goaltender. Is there reason to believe that they could come out of the West even with Colorado and Dallas still in there? If you beat the defending Stanley Cup champions four straight, you can beat anybody, and that's what they're selling in their dressing room. And they'll have the same game plan whoever they play, probably Dallas. So if they play Dallas, uh, Ruchin's going to play against Madonna. Carney will be on the ice all the time against Madonna. They do not take a lot of penalties. They're a very disciplined team. One thing's got to change, though. They did not score a power play goal against the Detroit Red Wings, which is unbelievable that they beat that team four straight without a power play goal. I thought they'd have to have a good power play in order to create some offense. That didn't work. And above all, Ken Jaguar do it again. If he does it again the way he played, they can beat anybody. The thing that stands out when we interviewed him the other day on ESPN and I asked him, can this team win a Stanley Cup? He was focused. He said, let's not think about that. Yep. Can we win the next series is what's important. Mike Babcock, the coach, is doing a good thing with the players. They're all saying the right thing to the press. They're not giving any other teams any ammunition, saying we're going to win, we're going to win. They're very humble right now because they haven't won anything right now. They won one round. Big deal. they got to win three rounds to get to the Stanley Cup and win it. So they know that. But right now, they're a confident team. I think that really, really built that team up when they started thinking they could beat the Detroit Red Wings. I think in game one and two, they hoped they could. Game three and four, they thought they could. We talked about a trend in the Stanley Cup playoffs can be a 
a game or two. Period. Maybe. I'll tell you what, I got turned around. I thought Tampa was going to beat Washington. Then they lose the first two games. And I start looking at the stars on Washington. You go, you know what? This team could win the Stanley Cup. But all of a sudden, the Lightning have the lead 3-2 to two after winning the last three games. And Washington, 1-6 and six in playoff series when trailing three games to two. Game three, John Tortorelli put Martin San Luis with Le Cavalier and Prosper. They put all their eggs in one basket. That would have been an easier job defensively by the Washington Capitals. But what happened is the Washington defensive five cannot handle the Martin San Luis line. San Luis got eight points basically in three games. That has to change if Washington has a chance of winning the series. Should they get more physical with the little guy? They can't. He skates too well. The yeah. big defenseman can't catch that guy. He eats him up. All right. We want to check this one more NBA score one more time. The Celtics come back and knock off the Pacers 103 to 100. And Paul Pierce, it looked like, did the damage down the stretch. 40 points for Boston now leads that best of seven series, one game to nothing. Well, we thank you for joining us once again. We'll see you again next week on ABC. For Barry Melrose, I'm John Saunders. Thanks for watching. See you next Saturday. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword ABC Sports. Now except on the West Coast, stay tuned for World News Tonight or your local news after these messages. The way that I've played has helped me rec or be recognized as one of the top defensemen in the league. Thomas, who's going to win tonight? Huh? Who's going to win? <laughs> oh, it looks pretty nice. Bad number, but what number you got? I got number five tonight. Didn't get to choose because I was a late addition. So Robo's playing good right now, and he's number five. So maybe it'll bring me some luck as well. So. Goal in any warm up. Please welcome the 2003 Dodge AHL All Stars. In front, plenty of room here. Lupachuk scores! Ross Lupachuk, an offense fit. Ross Lupachuk poked away nicely and is hustling back with Ross Lupachuk. In front, plenty of room here. Oh my god! Oh my god! It was pretty good. Uh, I had to adjust my game a little bit. I mean, I didn't know what to expect in the. It's my first All Star game, so. But uh, you know, I, mean, I scored a goal, which was nice. And, you know, had a good time. Met some new people. And I'm gonna head home here and get back to business. Cool Cuts music provided by Boomcat and their song "The Reckoning." Additional music provided by Universal Honey and their song "Closer Every Day." Next week, Detroit's legendary captain remains as focused as ever. Getting to the Stanley Cup Finals, having been there and lost, realize that if you're going all the way, you better win because, you know, nobody really gives a damn when you come second. NHL Cool Shots has been brought to you by Powerade, the official fuel of the NHL, and by Bauer, the unstoppable heart of hockey. Mr. Schneider is a, is a, is a gener very generous man. He's a wonderful owner. And there's nothing that I would like better than to keep my promise and bring the Stanley Cup here for the Coming up on NHL tonight. Sometimes you're the windshield. Sometimes you're the thunderbug. Cheaters never prosper. Tampa Bay gives it their all. Can Washington cap off another road win in this series? All poles lead to Vancouver. Blues and Canucks play game five, and when push comes to shove, St. Louis has the Blues. Three overtimes and a baby. Driver eight, take a break. And Alexa Recchi, take a break, too. I got to get home. I got another child in the morning. So. <laughs> well, my wife's going to have a child, and great thing in life. I'm looking forward to it. Believe NHL tonight begins right here, right now. Night 10 of the Stanley Cup playoffs alongside Chicken Parm, Ray Ferraro, and Barry Melrose. I am John Butchergast. How are you, Barry? Super, John. Ray? Couldn't be better. All right, let's get right to it. We begin with the Caps and the Lightning series tied at two, and thus far the series has two constants. The road team has won all the games, and the team that has scored first has won all the games. Good news for Caps fans in Tampa Bay for game five. Score first 
it's a lock. Game five time from Tampa Bay, and here are all the components. Winner of game five in series tied at two. Go on to win 80% of the time. Dan Boyle tries to clear right to Sergey Berzin, but Tavi is there. Later second, Vincent the Convier to four check. And only the goalie follows through on the clear round, Ray, and they say hi, Sticky. Not only is this a bad call, it shouldn't be four minutes either. LeCavalier gets cut, but he's reaching for the puck. Kolzig doesn't see him. He's got to be able to shoot the puck. Ensuing power play because it was more than just two minutes. Bolt score. one nothing. Barry. Cardinal sin right here. Brendan Witt killing a penalty. Complete possession. He does not wire it out. It's blocked by Boyle. That always comes back to haunt you, and it ends up on Sam uh, Louis stick, and then possible stick, and then in the net. And he had the whole wall to work with there. Didn't quite see it. Second period, one nothing. Ben Clymer behind the net. Uh, funky cold Kubina, Ray. Yeah, nobody uh, picks up Kubina on the way in. He's got Kolzig beat, but he rifles it over top of the net. Later, Yager knocks down Kubina. Gets the puck back. Girls and how in the wide world of sports did he see Michael Nylander, Barry? I don't think he saw Michael Nylander. It's just a field. Probably got a hauler from the front of the net and put it right on the tape. Pretty good uh, player, that Yager. Oh, never looked up. Now in the third, 1-1. One, one. St. Louis steals from Bonda. Right there. Looks from Odin. Has him. Fire save. Richards. How about now? Two saves there for Oli the goalie later in the third. So, two great passes. LeCavier somehow finds Netscash right there, right on his tape. Netscash waits, 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 sees St. Louis' wee little stick up in the air, Ray, and finds him for the goal. Well, St. Louis goes to the net. Great pass by LeCavier, as you mentioned. Netscash looks it at, uh, across the front of the net, finds St. Louis. Everybody's looking at the puck. Nobody picks up Marty. Last 60 seconds, mayhem. Bearson almost beats Happy Bullen. Doesn't. That's a happy bullet from the regular season right there. He hasn't been doing that in the playoffs that much. That's right. Player of the month in March in the NHL. First game in series won by the home team. The team that has scored first has won all five games in this series. And again, don't forget, there were 344 best of seven playoff series prior to this year. Of those series tied at two, the winner of game five has won 80% of the time. The Bolts need one more win to claim their first playoff series victory in franchise history. And you can thank Marty. We have to make sure we don't lose the momentum and uh, come out hard in the third. And I thought we sustained some pretty good pressure on him in the third. We had a lot of good chances. And uh, Habby was strong when they got their chances. And uh, everybody elevate their game again tonight. And that's the way we got to approach every game. Washington came back and, and again ties the game up. And Marty, Marty, Stan, and Vinny make a great play in the winning goal. I mean, the game could have gone either way. Uh, it was who was going to make the next big play both defensively and offensively, and uh, we were very fortunate uh, to get it done. But I thought we played well, well enough to win the game. I just need to convert on a few chances, and like I said, uh, be a little uh, smarter with the puck and not give them opportunities, but it didn't work out. Bruce Cassie said the officials misread the rule on that only the goalie high sticky. Well, MSL now has four goals and four assists in the opening round. Since 1990, only two men have recorded more points in their first ever playoff series. They are Mark Recchi in 91 and Paul Correa, cha-cha-cha, in 97. Barry had just four goals in 69 games as a flame. Of course, this year, 33, and an all-star little guy. Those guys aren't supposed to be big-time playoff performers. Well, again, it's not the size of the fight and the dog, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just this guy has got so much bravery. You see his face, it's cut wide open. He goes into traffic. He's fast, very tough to catch if you're a big lumbering defenseman. And he scored those eight points basically in three games. So that shows how well he's playing. What does he add to this team? Just about everything. I think he single-handedly turned this series around. Right here, you see the speed of him. Right early in the game, turns it right around. Backsville's watching the defenseman up. You want to see vision? Great pass to Prospel coming late out of the corner. That's a power play goal we talked about. What else does he add to this team? A little bit of anticipation. Steals the puck right there. Nice backhand saucer pass to Modine. That one didn't go in. Richardson also had a chance at it. Neither one scored. When they need a goal, who's been scoring all those goals? Yeah, Netscatch made a great play, but it was San Luis who got away from Zubris on that play. San Luis is doing everything for this team. La Cavalier is their star. Happy Bull and maybe their most valuable player during the regular season. But without a doubt right now, the reason they're up one go uh, game is Martin San Luis. They should name a city after this guy. <laughs> People talk about the economic situation. In the NHL, but look at Calgary. It's not money. That was money. That was they bad traded decision. 
Laguerre, Bad and they didn't decision. re-sign St. Louis, two of the best playoff performers. I can't right believe now. they make the playoffs every year. Oh, they don't. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, a captain's job is to be an example, an example of commitment, courage, and confidence. On the ice, Vancouver captain Marcus Naslin had an MVP year during the regular season. Off the ice, his quotes haven't quite instilled his team with confidence. After failing to win the Northwest Division on the last day of the regular season, Naslin said his Canucks quote choked. Now with his team down 3-1, Naslin, who might have opted for a fire and brimstone guarantee type speech, opted for the cautious approach. I don't get a feeling that anyone's given up. And uh, we know it's a tough task to come back from 3-1, no doubt about it. But uh, with a win here, we go back and, and get another shot at beating them in St. Louis, which I, I think we, we can do. And then uh, hopefully finish it off here again. So um, I see the possibilities. Fired up, Barry? I'm really charged. I, that got me going. Barry? Uh, he's Ray, just a nice I guy. I, I had to wake him up. He's a very nice man. You know, Brent Sopel. What happened here, Ray? Uh, the shaggy DA throws <laughs> it in from the point here. Worst hairdo in hockey. Not that I have any hair. Ball guys are always ripping the guys with hair. <laughs> that could be a mullet, Barry. I guess you know <laughs> it is a mullet. Oh, look at Sean Podine almost tied up, Barry. He goes to the far post like he's been taught since he's a kid. Nash makes a nice play. Nash is very effective, but Kucha is excellent, Ray. Ray, Eric Boganicki, chances in front. Yeah, Bogey has had a great year this year. He came out of nowhere. He's wide open. He can't get a stick on it. His only oh. stops him here. Here he's lying down close to the ice, and Kucha makes a nice pad save. That was a penalty as he was tripped up. Meanwhile, Dan Cluche gives it up and Tyson Nash ties the game at one. Ten moments later, Matt Cook. No, Matt Cook, yes, the Bertuzzi. Man, those hands are so fast. Barry, he's enormous and quick. And he uses his body to shield the puck. It's very hard to go through. A guy's 250 pounds. See how he uses it on defenseman right there? Makes a great play. He is really, really talented. It's amazing. And man, that big, that good. All right, so the big, land who came, the big line who came in with not very much production, starting to get off to a good start, and they're not done. First Bertuzzi, now Morrison. His first of the series. That was Bertuzzi's first of the series. 3-1 Vancouver. But what about the captain? Bertuzzi has one. Morrison has one, and Nazan has one. Second of the playoffs, Barry, 4-1, Van. Very similar to what Ottawa does in their power play. Nazan has the puck there. Now Osgood's got to respect the pass. He cheats a little bit, opens up his legs, and right off the right foot. All right, power play Vancouver, but we're going the other way in a 4-1 game. Corey Stillman, holy mackerel, look at all those deeks, and how doesn't this go in, Ray? No idea. Stillman was the best forward for St. Louis tonight. He makes about five deeks. He thinks he's got it there. He tries to shove Cluche into the net. The puck stays out. Cluche with a big save. Stillman would score later to make it 4-2, and then Ruchinski with an empty net makes it 4-3. We, we're not done yet. Under a minute to go, but then seven seconds later, Sammy Sallow. Off the glove of Osgood. Bertuzzi, Morrison, Nasland. Three goals. After combining for just one the first four games of the series, Morrison just his second playoff goal in 25 playoff games. Doug Way, another good game, two helpers. Game six, Sunday in St. Louis, right here on ESPN2, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. Okay, so Ray, uh, the Blues had a chance to, to wrap this thing up in Vancouver. Instead, they go back to St. Louis. What do you see in this one? Well, any way that Vancouver is going to get back in the series is going to be on the backs of their big line. Todd Bertuzzi, Marcus Naslin, and Brendan Morrison. Coming into the game tonight, they had a goal and three assists. That's it. They need, they need more out of these guys. You saw the Bertuzzi goal. He takes it to the front of the net. He uses his body. Played over 20 minutes today. Mark Crawford wanted him on the ice as much as possible. You see Brendan Morrison go to the front of the net. He has not been going to the front of the net. He, he's looked tired early in the series. He had a very nice game today. And Naslin, who you guys don't like his speech, he's no Vince Lombardi, but he can shoot the puck, <laughs> puts it through the five hole here. Vancouver took advantage of a St. Louis team that, that had some problems with the flu. They lost Havanoff early, who played just 30 seconds. Pronger looked not anywhere near at full strength, and McGinnis was, was out of the lineup with a shoulder injury. The big line took advantage of, of St. Louis being undermanned. They did a very good job. Now they got to do it again in St. Louis. And you wonder if that flu will become an issue as we go back to St. Louis. What if more guys get sick? They'll be doing, uh, the doctors will be working overtime. Don't worry. Break out the St. Joseph's aspirin, please. More to come here on the NHL tonight. We focus on some of the top blue liners in these Stanley Cup playoffs. We honor the offensive defenseman and defensive defenseman. And Barry and Ray break down the toy like a Toyga Flyer Maple Leaf series. All that and more when NHL Tonight continues. NHL Tonight, brought to you by Labatt Blue, imported from Canada. Look up, see blue.
the Saab 9.3 Convertible. So many adjectives have never been so affordable. Lease a Saab 9.3 Convertible as low as $399 a month for 48 months. For details, see your Saab dealer. Hello? Hey, how you doing? You, you want to grab some dinner? Oh, it's you. You don't call for ages, and I'm just supposed to say, hi, great, dinner, fine. No, yeah, but, but, but I... But nothing. Could you hibernate or something? Whoa. Um, hey, let's go around. Shh. Yeah. Look up, see blue. Look back blue. You must be so hungry. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys, meet the new guy. Hey. Hi, I'm Bob Holtkamp. Hey, Hi. help yourself to some snacks. Speaking of which, you know what would taste good about now? Yeah, a big, hot and juicy cheeseburger. With everything. I can almost taste it. Telling me, if there are a place to get a hamburger that good this late, I'd not only drive, I'd buy. Really? Wendy's Classic Hamburgers are made fresh, so they're always hot and juicy, so you can eat great even late. You must be the new guy. Yeah, thanks. Wendy's, it's better here. The intensity picks up. Now. The game changes. Now. Champions rise up. Now. The NBA playoffs on ESPN. Season long on ESPN and ESPN2. Access the Stanley Cup playoffs. Stars versus Oilers Game 6. Will you be watching? Top Blue Liners. Brought to you by LaBat Blue. Imported from Canada. Look up, see blue. 39-year-old Scott Stevens has a ge genetic makeup like few others, still going strong. Stevens was on the ice for nearly all of Joe Thornton's shifts as the Devils beat the Bruins in five. He had two points and was a plus five. But what does Barrett Jackman do well? Uh, Ray, he's 17 years younger. Yeah, he is 17 years younger. He's very physical like Stevens. He moves the puck very well, underrated skater. Everybody knows how tough he is. He's been in Bertuzzi's kitchen all series. Now to the offensive ilk. Sergei Zuboff is playing 27 minutes a game in the Star Oilers series and has four goals and four assists. Two of his goals have come on the power play. Dallas power plays at 18%. And Toronto's Thomas Caberlieberry. Well, he's been enjoying the rush very well. Toronto's having trouble creating offense. When you come back that, you let your defenseman come with your forwards. Big overtime goal right there against Philadelphia. Mark Recchi will never forget April of 2003. On Wednesday, he scored a triple overtime goal to beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. On Thursday, Recchi's wife Alexa gave birth to a seven pound, three ounce baby boy at Pennsylvania Hospital. He is the couple's third child. Obviously talk to my wife and make sure she's doing okay. And, and uh, you know, we talked about, well, I hope it doesn't go to overtime. <laughs> and sure enough, boom, <laughs> three of them. Dangerous looking rush for She turned it off about 10 minutes before I scored. She said she couldn't take it anymore. She was too nervous. So uh, <laughs> she turned it off. She said she turned it back on to watch the, uh, to see what was happening. And, and we, were, we had won the game. She didn't know I scored, though. Uh, they were interviewing, uh, actually, she said they were interviewing JR. So she thought he scored the goal. And Hans just gets it in the rookie. Ricky gets set. The shot scores. Ricky got so many the goal here. I got to get home. I got to have a child in the morning, so. We landed just after 3. Uh, I got to the house 20 to 4, um, you know, got ready for bed, and, and uh, I probably fell asleep about 4.30ish, somewhere around there, and, and uh, actually I was still, you know, I was thinking, well, you're not going to get much. I was almost not even worth it, and I got up at 5.30, and we had to be at the hospital between uh, 6 and 6.15, so. so and then uh, the baby was born at 8.15. There's nothing more important than your family and, and having a child. I mean, it's it's the most remarkable feeling, and, um, you know, especially when it comes out. I mean, we knew it was a boy, but it was it was still, um, you know, when it comes out, it's just it's it's awesome. You know? Austin Recchi is the third child for Mark and Alexa. Now to the series, Barry, Leafs and Flyers, and now uh, the Flyers have a tactic that right now they are going to 
because at times they have problems scoring goals. Well, when you're playing against, obviously, the guy who's carrying the series, and that's Eddie Belfort, you've got to combat him and do things to bother him. And the Flyers really, really taken to going to the net. He's been bumped more than any of their defensemen. Watch right here. He's always got men in front of him, guys, big guys, too. John LeClaire, there's 230 pounds. The defensemen are having a lot of trouble moving those big Philadelphia forwards. Thus, Eddie Belfort has got a lot of contact. With LeClaire, you've got guys like Hamzus is a big man. Mm -hmm. You've got Primo who's been in, in, uh, in front of the net all series long, winning physical battles. Uh, you've got other big forwards that are going to the net. Rolnick is in his face a lot. You see the traffic in front right here. Belfort does not get to see many pucks clean. Uh, when he's seeing an odd man rush, guys are coming at him as a group, and he always knows if he gives up a rebound, there's going to be a goal scored. Uh, and that's what they got to do. He is the key to the series. I feel they've been outplayed very, very badly. He's the reason it's uh, going into get into Series 5, and he must continue to do that. So, Ray, uh, that's what I think about Eddie Belfort. What do you see in this series? Well, if Toronto's going to get back in, you're right. Belfort's been the key, and they've got to clear some room for him. I've also, they brought in Owen Nolan at the trading deadline, and he's got to do something. Nolan, Nolan has not been physical. He's not got to the front of the net. And without him in the lineup, or him being effective in the lineup, they, they really don't have much chance. He's gotten just a couple of chances on goal. I haven't liked the way that he's not been physical. He's had some health problems in the past. I don't know if that's a factor or not. Phil Housley was brought over to bolster the defense, as Barry mentioned, because the Flyers are so big and strong. They haven't been able to use Housley since game two. Here you see him getting beat by Jeremy Roenick and going to the front of the net. Also, a big help would be to get Alexander McGillney back in the lineup. He takes a stick from Roenick right in the chops. He missed uh, game four with concussion-like symptoms. They're not really going so far as to say it's a concussion because he would have to pass baseline tests that would, would eliminate any lingering problems and would make him eligible to play. They need him back in the lineup. They need a contribution from, uh, from Nolan as well. And as you mentioned, Eddie Belfer's got to be the best player. Series tied at two. You know how important game fives are. Again, the winner of game fives go on to win 80% of the time. Flyers leaves on Saturday. After a bumpy start, the Stars are soaring. One more win. They move on and play the Muddy Ducks. Ray and Barry tell us why. They're up three games to two. But first, New Jersey Scott Stevens has appeared in more regular season games won by his team than any player in NHL history. We want to know... Who has appeared in the most winning playoff games? Now, this is a good, solid question any hardcore hockey fan should know. Does Barry and Ray know? Find out next. a new level of performance from Acura. The all-new TSX. K-Swiss, let's go. Let's go. Uh, part three. Got love for my shoes, K-Swiss. K-Swiss is back with a brand new invention and the SP249 to the description. Silver stripe times five, one of a kind. An athletic design for the times that'll blow your mind. Sporty style is on point, it won't miss. Uh. Got love for my shoes, K-Swiss. Got love for my shoes, K-Swiss. Third and long once again for the Texans. Carr brings the offense to the line. The Cowboys' front four has been all over the rookie. What does your team need? The NFL Draft. Boomer, Mel Kuyper Jr. and the crew bring you 17 hours, 32 teams, all 262 picks because every round counts. The 2003 NFL Draft presented by Coors Light, next Saturday and Sunday, only on ESPN. I tell you, people love digital cable for the strangest reasons. Like I'm showing this lady all the interactive features, and I get to the blackjack, she goes nuts. Head, head, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme, come on, come on, come on. Nuts. <laughs> Insight Digital Cable has lots of interactive features. Everyone's got their favorite. What's your insight? Insight Media Advertising has an immediate opening for a full-time shooter editor in our Lafayette, Indiana office. 
Responsibilities include, but are not limited to, providing production support for on-site and studio commercials. Basic videography and non-linear editing skills are required. Knowledge of current production trends and related computer software is helpful. Insight Media Advertising offers competitive salary and excellent benefits. No phone calls. Please apply to Insight Media Advertising, Anderson, Indiana. All right, boys, simple question. Who has appeared in the most winning playoff games in history? I think it's Glenn Anderson. That's who I got written down here, Glenn Anderson. Barry, how could he go against your man? Patty Waugh. Glenn Anderson grabbed my attention first. Lowe and Messier are next at uh, 151. Well, tomorrow night, ESPN 2, the Dallas Stars look to close out the Edmonton Oilers. Stars up three games and two. The Stars power play humming an 18% rate in this series. The Oilers got to stay out of the box. Yeah, at, at, at the skill level that the Dallas Stars have, Edmonton can't be giving them any extra chances. Dallas had 19 power plays in game two, which is just absurd. <laughs> they get into game five, they have to have a, a solid start here. Ethan Morrill cross-checks Scotty Young in the mouth for no real apparent reason with the score one nothing. He gives them another power play chance. Here's Scott Ferguson trips, uh, trips one of the Dallas Stars off the faceoff. He goes to the box. Just 20 seconds later, here's Medano to Zuboff. It's in the net, two nothing. Edmonton has enough problems in this series, keeping up to Dallas and all of their talented guys. They cannot give them extra chances on the power play. They also can't make things much as, as easy as they have for the Dallas Stars. Exactly, things came way too easy for that skilled team the Dallas Stars have. They don't need any help, and penalties are one of them. But the, when the goals that were scored, the puck was going east to west, side to side. That should not happen with a good defensive team. Now watch right here, one side of the rink to the other side of the rink and back. That's bad defense, folks, whether you're killing a penalty or whether it's five on five. There's another slash. The puck goes from one side to the other. Very tough for a goaltender to follow the puck and make the save. Right here, it is the goaltender's fault. Casello kicked out a terrible rebound. But again, the puck went side to side, 100 feet. Young here, off the shot. He's got to kick that thing back in front of him or into the corner. So that's two easy goals for the great Dallas Stars team. Keep the puck in the, in the center. Make them work for the uh, goals around, along the boards or in front of the net. But don't let Madonna have one-timers from the side. It's going to be in the net all night long. Oilers 1 for 20 on the power play. Game 6, ESPN. 8 o'clock Saturday night. While the hockey world and especially hockey town are still in a state of shock, it's not yet Easter and the Wings will be home watching their kids look for eggs instead of looking for another Stanley Cup. The defending cup champs with some final thoughts on their season-ending sweep at the hands of the Mighty Ducks. I was thinking like uh, if you could uh, win one game so uh, the momentum would turn around and uh, uh, I would say without talent, experience and the uh, skill level so I think we should we should be able to uh, beat that team. You're not used to having uh, this much time off, so uh, you almost feel guilty uh, about trying to go out and do anything as far as a vacation or, or whatever that may be. But, uh, uh, you know, you don't want to watch any of these other games, but you know you're going to hear about things, and uh, it's going to be uh, difficult to watch someone else lift the cup. But, um, you know, that should be motivation enough right there for us uh, when we come back here next, uh, next year. How popular are the Wings in Detroit during the overtime against the Ducks? 41% of the televisions turned on in the metro Detroit area were watching the Wings and Anaheim. More to come here on the NHL tonight. Tonight's three is next, and we celebrate playoff overtime classics. ESPN HD, sponsored by Philips and Best Buy. Somewhere between exits 45 and 50, an order was canceled. Somewhere between a hose and a radiator, there was trouble. Somewhere between noon and 2.30, there was a change of plans. And somewhere between where you are and where you're going, there's a Super 8. See you along the way. Wow, you're so lucky. I know. I never knew I could feel so complete. I want to feel complete. Yeah. May I? Get the internet you've been expecting. Move to Earthlink. Our exclusive online tools get rid of virtually all interruptions and hassles. So no matter how you want to connect, we not only make it happen, we make it better. Why wait? Move to Earthlink. Call 1-800-EARTHLINK or go to earthlink.net for special savings.
your glasses for a toast. Champagne? <laughs> Good move. A quality beer drinker doesn't compromise a Samuel Adams lager. Always a good decision. Access the Stanley Cup playoffs. Stars! 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 Stars versus Oilers Game 6. Will you be watching? All right, tonight's three salutes overtime classics. April 18th, 1987, 16 years ago, Friday, Pat LaFontaine beats the Caps. Yeah, but Gordy Deneen makes the play. He does, and he shoots it through Dale Henry. We used to call him Loaf of Breadhead. He had a huge <laughs> Nine years later, the Caps victimized once more Peter Nedved. Steve Levy was doing that game. What a surprise. That starts the Steve Levy legend of always doing that long overtime games, and... Just two years ago, Keith Primo beats the Tugger. You know what? That was his last goal he's ever scored in the playoffs. And that was a Steve Levy game, too. Third longest overtime game ever. So, again, the loaf of bread head? Loaf of bread head. He had a large... Like Saskatoon. Yes, right? that's right. He had, a, he had a pretty big head to start with, but he had really high hair. Okay. And um, loaf of bread head, wonder bread head was what we used to call him All when right. he couldn't hear. Uh, back here with Ray Ferraro and noted Jimmy Durante enthusiast, Barry Melrose. <laughs> Very underrated comment. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about uh, Minnesota and Colorado. Did not touch on them during the show. Uh, they lose game one yeah. because of Dwayne Rollison, but they, they even dominated much of that game. Um, what did Colorado do in the next... Few games uh, to change to turn things around, if, if anything. They became Colorado, yeah. uh, and again, you know, they they're all their focus on uh, defensively is to stop the Forsberg line, the best line during the regular season, and, and they're doing an okay job on that. But all of a sudden, Joe Sackey gets hot. That's why they are a team that's going to maybe win the Stanley Cup. They got so much depth. Uh, if the forwards don't score, then Blake jumps in, or Morris jumps in, or Foot jumps in for a big goal. DeVries even. Uh, they just got so many weapons, and I think they just wore Minnesota down finally. And I really think Ray, the only way Minnesota is going to win this game, I think one of the goaltenders, whoever they use, has to steal it from Minnesota and give that team some life again. Well, I agree. Jacques Lemaire said that, you know, we have to play almost a perfect game. We have to have a great effort from everybody if we're going to even compete in this series. If we don't get a great effort from everyone, we're going to have a tough time. I, I think what, you've, what we're starting to see in this series is the Minnesota Wild had a terrific season. They play their system as well as anybody else. They got everything they can out of each